interest of cheese show um i'm just gonna we're gonna run through like really quick introductions um of, like what people kind of play here or whatever and then we can get into some stupid questions and, and fun times and all that so uh we're in a goofy mood so we'll see Never. just how many actual like good questions come out of us because i feel like it's not going to be a lot <laughs> um but anyway uh my name is Foos, and uh i'm i'm a dm half the time when i dm difficult Lord, terrain okay. And then the other half of the time, I'm in, uh, then there's this campaign called Legacy, uh, Legacy, and I play a ranger who's very cranky most of the time and very demonic at the moment. And yeah. And then for Flaney, whenever he does Humblewood, I play a wizard hedgehog, <laughs> a hedge wizard. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're finishing up Cause of Cause Venda, though. So that's, I'm a DM for that too, but that, that should be ending, I think, next week or the week after. We'll find out. Um, but anyway, I'm going to pass it off to Flandy so he can introduce himself. Oh, and he wasn't right. here the last time we cheesed. Hello. I'm, I'm the new cheesy. Uh, my name is Flandiferous the Flandies. Um, I am a once every six months DM of said Humblewoods. Um, I, I get killed in uh, Fuzzy's campaign. I get almost killed in Nendez's campaign. I, I have, they're, they're both brothers, but they haven't seen each other in years because who knows what happened in either campaign. Um, that's what I do, and every now and then I participate in Fuzzy's one shots, which are really like fifteen shots. Listen, uh, <laughs> this day is also yeah. called Throw Shade at Fuzz Day. <laughs> That's every day. That's last no last time it was Flandy Day uh, during. Blake. Yeah, last time it was absolutely so, Flay Flandy. Yeah, <laughs> crosshairs are on me today. <laughs> Take that. That's why we waited. <laughs> That's fine. I'll accept it. It's all good. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to Los Las Papaya. Los Las Papaya. No, no. It's singular. Why would Hi. you? Um, my name is Maya. I am in several campaigns across the board here. Uh, in Fuzz's campaign, where she ceaselessly torments my water genasi <laughs> um, with very creative amounts of drama. Um, I'm in the nurse campaign playing a druid, a uh, changeling druid, um, who is actually having a great time because face stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a contradiction here. It's a contrast, you know? It's just. Uh, I'm also in the campaign that Flandy runs. Um, within, I play a Jerbeen warlock who's all about bravery despite being very timid by nature. <laughs> um, and when I'm not in those three, I also do off and on campaigns on Sundays and Tuesdays, um, where I GM and at the same time am currently world building and building a project of my own. So. Which I think in the future we might have you streaming here, right? I mean, we kind of had a talks about it, but maybe that'll come up. I ain't got the connection for it, but. <laughs> I do. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. You got you got someone who can. Um, but that that might be a thing, uh, especially to put the spotlight on our lovely creative Maya. I would love to be able to do that if we get the chance. Thank you. Um, sci-fi. Yeah, sci fantasy. It's it's got a lot of stuff going on. Solar punk, post apocalyptica, cyberpunk, etc. Um, I'm gonna pass it along to either Linus or Dubs. Whoever, <laughs> whoever wishes. Whoever. All right, Dubs looks very confused. Dennis, you got this? <laughs> Apparently I do. Uh, I am Nenners, uh, victim in Fuzzy's campaign, uh, lovely <laughs> portal in Flandy's campaign, uh, suplexing robot, and currently cannibal survivor Juicy Jim in uh, Maya's campaign. <laughs> So uh, yes, that's that's pretty much. I think that covers more or less everything. Uh, I DM on Fridays the Legacy campaign, uh, one that my siblings started when we were we we lads, and are seeing to its conclusion. So that should be fun. Um, should I think of anything well, else? Well, we're trying to see head? it to its conclusion, but Nenners keep throwing in lots of baddies in the way. <laughs> I don't know. It was one one roll. It's not my fault. I mean, I feel like. It was. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I also... Oh, I'm also uh, another a victim times two because I, I also play a goblin in Fusey's other campaign. Oh, yeah. um, super fun. I'm definitely enjoying it. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that covers everything. So, Dubs, hopefully that was enough me buying time for you that you're ready. <laughs> I can keep rambling if you want, but uh, it's up to you. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's appreciated, but no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am doubles. I am very close. Difficult terrain when I'm awake. And I am a <laughs> uh, Kenku fight, fighter when I'm awake in the Legacy Campaign. Mm -hmm. All correct. <laughs> um, and I dragged him into various campaigns, one shots and such. Um, but um, yes. yeah, that's us. Uh, also, <laughs> listen, you can't say those things. <laughs> um, the only thing I definitely wanted to mention was like, we, uh, this, this show is called In the Interest of Cheese because, um, many times we try and pull some like cheesy attempts to get things to swing our way through the, with the DM. Like if, I don't know, Nenders is trying to hit us with an AOE and we're like, but there's like, a two foot rock in front of me. So could I like hide behind that rock and like not take damage? Like cheese for those things. We're constantly interrupting DMs because of cheese. Um, I mean, so. sand still counts as undead. I'm, I'm sure of it. Like, it right. Just, yeah. It, See, there you go. It used yep. to be alive. It, it got disintegrated. And now it's sand. And yep. if it's attacking me, I should be able to retaliate. As a paladin, he was attempting to <laughs> rationalize that sand was undead and that he could therefore use a paladin ability to save himself from the sandstorm that was happening in the area. So, yeah, the cheese, uh, in the interest of cheese, is in reference to this. And that's, <laughs> that's pretty cheesy. It's pretty fucking cheesy, but it's, good, it's a good time. I said if uh, sand is undead. <laughs> no! <laughs> I mean, I think you're confusing... <sighs> Undead, if like, assumes that it's animated, right? That there's, it's no longer, it's that weird in between. Like, you could argue that sand is dead or dead was, organic material. It was being animated by the wind. <laughs> no, no, it's being thrown. <laughs> like, you can pick up and throw a corpse. It doesn't mean you animated it. <laughs> it just means. <laughs> Oh not, boy. Not the uh, also, because we didn't have our lovely Flandy last time, I kind of want to ask you some of the questions that we asked last time. Uh, so we're going to have like just a mini spotlight on you because uh, I don't, I don't know. We'll find out how to do this in a smoother way next time, but uh, just to get your opinion on some things that we didn't really get a chance to say or hear from you last time. So, Flandy. Google Meet needs a spotlight feature where you just shine a light on the other person. I know, right? I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unplandiferous. Um, so, Flandy, uh, who you. is your most difficult character to play? Probably my NPCs in Humblewood. Oh, shit, really? <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, you don't have it, it's more people to focus on. Um, 
you don't have a full backstory. Well, I don't have full backstories for everybody in the town that you meet. Um, but it was also fun because it, it was spontaneous. And we found out that uh, Humboldt had a, what is it? An SEC or whatever? Oh, jeez. How, how did you word that notice? Oh, yeah, the SEC. The uh, <laughs> was it's, uh, security. The... SSC? SCC. It's, it's SCC. Securities, something exchange, whatever. I've got to look it up. Um, but yes, we, you, you have, in that lovely little village, you have an SCC. Yeah, that, that, that definitely wasn't planned. And, and that, that apparently turned out based off of uh, playing an NPC. <laughs> Securities Exchange Commission, SEC. <laughs> got it. He got it. He got there eventually. Don't worry. He's there. Um, all right. That was a good answer, actually. Um, all right. The other question. Um, what's an alignment that you would like to play? Well, I can't remember y'all talking about that. Um, well, I think I already play them. Um, and, and anything with an element of chaos <laughs> yeah. is definitely uh, the Flandy's alignment. Um, yes. I think it would be difficult to play something evil, like some sort of like chaotic evil or even lawful evil for me initially. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like it would be fun if given the opportunity, which I almost got, but uh, that didn't happen. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to say, like, I think for Ryland, though, you do do a lawful ish person, like, pretty well. Like, granted, he's not the typical kind of lawful, you know, everything by the rules and whatever. Um, yeah. But, like, adhering to his own code, I think you. You do well, <laughs> even though you as a person is, is certainly uh, more chaotic. But oh yeah, absolutely. I, Which I think you, you handle it well. I think that's part of why it's not the like righteous lawful, if you will, and that that is kind of the chaos too. Like he does have his own code that he follows. Uh, he tends to favor helping out others over himself, which kind of puts him in a pickle sometimes. But if, if that's what it means, that's what it means. <laughs> oh my god! I, how many times have you done something and? and uh, Valen's in the background, like, what? No, stop it. <laughs> I, I still think my personal favorite to this day is, is uh, when well, we're in the sandstorm and we heard voices outside the bubble. <laughs> and uh, Valen's like, don't do it. Don't you do it. Don't go out there. And Ryan's like, I gotta help. And um, Divine Sense later, bam, undead. <laughs> Yo. How many undead for the record? Oh, uh, you guys fought what, like eight of those guys or something? I don't remember. It was, it was a lot of those guys. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot. A lot, of, and, a lot of those dudes came up. And in true Ireland nature, his, his reaction wasn't an immediate fight. It was like, let's try to rationalize this. And and because they were acting as like normal people, uh, I mm -hmm. forgot what exactly they were called, but they were they were humanish, humanoid uh, to the enough. appearance. To but I was able arms. to detect the undead there, and he was just like. All right, level with me. Why are you undead? Like that—that that was kind dead? of his take on. <laughs> yep. And like, uh, I remember. I remember as a DM, I was like a little disappointed because I wanted the the fun thing about that particular undead creature is like they slowly deteriorate over time, so like they can look regular for maybe like tops twenty minutes, and then the undead uh, like starts kind of seeping out of them. So I was getting ready for him to like talk to you guys and you guys like watch an ear fall off or like a maggot come out of his eye socket or something like just like weird stuff that like he's acting really casual and not saying anything. But you guys are like, that's weird. Uh, but no, uh, the, that wonderful divine sense immediately picked it up. So I was like, well, dig is up. He's a bad boy. Here we go. I need to hug you more. Yes, absolutely. 100%. That's amazing. I guess my uh, was. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Hi. There it is. Right now. There we go. Oh. <laughs> um. Okay. Next one for Flandy. Um. Which of your characters has the best hair? Oh. Oh. Now I gotta look at him. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Hold on. Let me go look up their artwork real quick. Right here. I can just do it right here. Bam. Mm -hmm. uh, probably roll him. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he got the little spiky going. Uh, <laughs> Rylan, go Rylan has a, a serious case of uh, helmet hair 90% of the time. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yep. so I'm going to go with roll him. Okay. Yep. No, he also me... has a fuller beard. 
But yeah, Rylan has to fit his his head in the helmet, so he probably keeps it you know, <laughs> relatively trim because of that. <laughs> All right. Um, also, now that we kind of like ran through, you know, the main questions, I guess for you, um, in general, if anyone has any questions in chat, feel free to ask. We'll we'll get to them as we yeah through it and all that but um we usually uh we'll just kind of go through each person and see what their answer might be or if someone is is real anxious to answer a question feel fucking free um but we let me start with something that's like pretty fun i think as opposed to something that might be a little more serious <laughs> hopefully um we're super serious right now we're so serious i'm i'm gonna start with maya uh, you 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 can start us off with this, but you can choose whichever character. It doesn't have to be all of them. Uh, but if your character had a day off, what would it look like? My character had a day off. Hmm. A day without trauma? I don't know. You have. <laughs> so, so that means you family's getting traumatized on the reg too. <laughs> no, no, no. She's uh -huh. she's very fun. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, she's fighting all the time, but you know, she hasn't watched her parents get cooked or her friends die the first time. So you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's doing all right. Um, I'll go with Euphemia because she's not, she's not, she's not broken, right? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> I got in so much shape. It's fine. You're good. <laughs> uh, I think if Euphemia had a day off. Uh, she would just go make as much mischief as possible uh, with her shape shifting and just like, you know, her her inherent charm and just like kind of running around and you know just just making him like when she first met the party and she was just shape shifting in various forms and just like she approached you all as like a happy half orc that was playing a, like a flute or something. Yep. <laughs> just completely out of the blue and. Uh, yeah, just just having fun with people, being very very fish. Oh, well, that's cute and nice. Jeez. Uh, hey. How about you, then? Is, how would your character? Uh, are you talking about Valen or you can ninety of my characters? Um, ninety of my characters. Yeah. I'll okay. Uh, choose <laughs> one. Valen's kind of boring. He. I mean, it depends on what's going on. Like, if it's like, oh, we have a day off from the chaos, he would just prepare for the chaos. If it yep. was, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's you know, very of what we go through. Yeah, he he's very much like, what am I doing? Uh, what's what's my end goal? That's what I'm working towards. So, he would still be working in some way. He. I don't think he knows how to relax. Um, That's for damn sure. <laughs> Yeah, he he would just be working on some spell, something, pushing something uh, to help something, someone or something. Essentially, it just depends on the, the situation. Um, Brug, on the other hand, would be so sailing the seas with his motley crew, looking for booty and uh, maybe some ships to, or maybe just a good fight. You know, if he sees a good fight going down, he'll jump in, uh, not knowing what side is what or for what. But uh, sometimes you need to scrap, and by sometimes I mean all the time. So uh, that's him. I still want the spin off of him and Honk uh, doing God knows what on the Swords Coast. So yeah. let's go. And uh, Honk with a tiny little pirate hat because his head is really. Small. <laughs> yep. It would no. It would be a regular pirate hat, just kind of like tied at the top, so it fits on his head. <laughs> 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 Only the highest quality for Wonk. Oh boy. Do you think there's a tailor on board? <laughs> Not at that all. Was a, that was a two minute solution with some rope. <laughs> and told Wonk to stand still, and that was it. I, I feel like Wonk wouldn't even complain. He'd be like, all right, we're good. <laughs> Just carry on. Oh, that was awesome. Um, how about you, Flanny? Would any of your characters have a day off? What does that look like? Uh, I feel like. I feel like Roland would probably be the most likely to have a day off. I feel like if Ryland had the day off, he would find something unintentionally or intentionally. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's very true. Yep. <laughs> um, so if Roland had the day off, um, he would definitely take his time to probably uh, develop a in-depth plan to to trick everybody for the day. <laughs> It would probably not be like that day that he would act it. Like it'd probably take multiple mm -hmm. days off to get this thing ready. To go. 
very elaborate plan. That would probably get fucked up in the first 30 seconds anyways. <laughs> because dice. <laughs> Quality. Uh, yeah, so so that that's uh that's what Roland would do if he had the day off. <laughs> Ryland would probably like Oh, you know what? That that time in the astral was uh, pretty relaxed. Let's go find uh, that that sandwich lady, Sadani. Let's go find her. <laughs> and then on his way there, there'd be some short. Like he probably wouldn't make it to the astral plane before something happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't make it to Sadani Queen at all. <laughs> like, there's no way. <laughs> Show up. I need sandwich. <laughs> I think he would go look for her and then find himself in the waiting arms of another succubus or something. <laughs> that's just his luck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's that guy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, don't, don't do that. That's bad. What? Everything looks fine. Yep. What do you mean? Oh, God. You guys are paranoid. <laughs> Who's paranoid? <laughs> <laughs> nothing has ever nothing bad has ever happened when Ryland does something on his own or decides to do something. Anyway, um Dubs. Lion ass statements. If your character had a day off, what would it look like? Uh the gun will probably be working out. All day. All day. And hunting food. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> This is food and pull-ups. Hunting for them proteins. Food and pull-ups. Or, you know, someone scrap with. Oh my god. Yep. I love how, like, half of the re answers are like, I just want to have fun and tease people or something, and the other half of the answers are like, I'm just going to get better. <laughs> yeah. So either work out or just learn more shit. Gotta keep good. Mm-hmm. Right. He's got to be you, you know? Yeah. It's a lot of work. I hear you. Tina's physique. Yep. I know, uh, for me, Revaya uh, would absolutely just, like, hang out in the forest. I feel like her agenda would just be like, we're just going to spend the day here. And that's it. You know? Like, Zola and I will get food as we go or whatever, but, like, we'll just hang out, sit by a river or something, just enjoy the sounds and the peace, maybe talk to a raccoon or two, just have a good time. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine her vibe talking to her. <laughs> she loves talking her to her. Current state. <laughs> oh, right now? Oh my god. I mean, she would be really happy to do it though, because she, like there's there's no sense of normalcy like about yeah. her life at all. So like if she did get a chance to talk to like a perfectly regular raccoon who's just enjoying their time, you're like, how's it going? Got any any weird bugs lately? Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. is, I look for so then there's asking foos to roll persuasion on a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm trying to find out like what Revaya would need to do to get a raccoon to have to like roll persuasion against it, right? Like, <laughs> uh, raccoon, I need you to to oh, not be know. afraid of Zola. <laughs> oh yeah, no, Zola Nini. Oh, Zola Nini. Oh no, it's cool. Don't worry. Roll persuasion. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything is totally fine. Oh no, my dude, he's just a land shark. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. That could eat anything, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yep. pretty much. Uh, See the butterfly right. wings means he's not. <laughs> <laughs> His little butterfly wings are so cute. Oh, oh my god. god. I like Flandy posting the um, the caterpillar from the Bud's Life is like so accurate in my mind. Like I'm pretty sure they're not that small, but that's really what like in terms of body mass and like the size of the wigs, how I have them. Like <laughs> 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 a beautiful butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh... um, all right, uh, I'll move on to my next question here. Uh, I. I won't spotlight anyone this time. Anyone who's ready to answer, feel free to jump in. But uh, what's a moment from one of your peers, uh, whether RP or combat related, um, that really stood out to you at any point in time? Doesn't necessarily need to be in the last session or recently, but just something that was stuck in your brain <laughs> for a little bit. Ooh, I got this. 
I mean, there are many, but there are. I remember the time when we tried to uh, infiltrate underneath that <laughs> keep uh, in Legacy and Clandy for two hours with Roland uh, was trying to convince us that we should charge in on a mammoth. And then ultimately it resulted in us digging on the ground with the boule who had no sense of direction, <laughs> crashed us. And then when we tried to go south, Rolos uh, <laughs> decided it was time to, to mount the loudest unicorn rescue ever and got us dragged into a fight with the demon in which he talked shit and got hit. <laughs> <laughs> to the point in which his soul was in jeopardy. And we had to, it, it kept going. I know. <laughs> it wasn't just like one mistake. It's exactly as Maya is saying it. <laughs> many, many things went wrong. There was like 45 in bins. <laughs> and then the click showed up. <laughs> he was he was sharing a cell with the clicks. Mm -hmm. He talked over to getting his weapon back, so it was a fair fight. <laughs> mm -hmm. he got chewed on by a vampire. That was actually he met a red cat. His name is now Mr. Fuck you. <laughs> Held his concentration like a boss. I, yeah, I mean, you got downed, uh, I think, like once or twice. I know. Um, in the fight that happened up top, when you were in a freaking cage, um, Cheerio went down for the first time that Revaya, and that was actually part of the reason why Revaya since then uh, was so hard on Rolo, because she had known Cheerio forever, and he had never gone down. And because of the chaotic, you know, fights that happened and Rolo sparking every single one of them, she was like, "You cannot be trusted." I almost lost my friend, and I've never come that close. You know, I'm like this is your fault, essentially, <laughs> like in her mind. So yeah, that, oh my God. And that was like, that was pretty early Roland time too, right? Like you hadn't no. been a part of the group for like long at all. No, yeah, that was, that was towards the beginning. Yeah, because we, we just got out of the, the whoop loopy situation and we went, I think straight there and then like that happened right after. So it's like, we just saved you and then you did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good first impressions. Oh god, yeah. As soon as Maya was like, remember that one time we were trying to infiltrate? I already knew. <laughs> 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 already knew. Oh my god. That whole adventure. <laughs> I've kind of a twofer for that one then. Okay. Um I wanna let I wanna end on the higher note. So uh, the first one for me is uh when the group was uh basically voting whether or not Roland was going to join him because uh, of his his compromise situation, mm -hmm. <laughs> which like as a player, like I was super excited, and I I, I secretly kind of dark foos time. I secretly kind of hoped that y'all would say no, <laughs> and kick him out, just so we could go down that 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 dark path of what may have happened. <laughs> um, Don't be rubbing your hands together, as there. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, that that was definitely it was interesting to see it actually play out and it wasn't like a like a mean situation or, or a upsetting one by any means it was one it was legit and it was really cool to see everybody actually respond i don't want to say appropriately but like realistically mm -hmm. so that, that, that one was pretty cool that, the yeah. other point was uh then there's this uh npc fight <laughs> With Sertirio. <laughs> Having us play. Um, oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the NPCs went deep and uh, <laughs> they, they had like minor abilities, and whatnot, but uh, we were able to help uh, Sertirio fend off the, the bad who's coming in. <laughs> that was pretty cool. The legend. Yeah, you could think of, you could thank Matty Mercer for that one. <laughs> I didn't get much sleep last night because I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. Fuck, it's like, 1 a.m. <laughs> my, my campaign's in like 18 hours and I have to work. Fuck it, I guess I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, that was an awesome moment, though. I agree. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll go next, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Unlike Flandy, I will only take my one. Uh, I will <laughs> say... Uh, take everything nice to said about and then it's back. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Uh, Please. <laughs> You, uh, you found me, god damn it. Uh, what the, why do you all your characters start with E? It's so confusing. Irene, <laughs> Irene getting uh, charmed. 
Uh, <laughs> you yeah. role played that so well. Because yes. uh, I... You know, I, I would have been outraged. Uh, I personally hate charm mechanics. I understand why they're used, and I'm not saying that they're bad. <laughs> Just from a flavor perspective, I don't like them. <laughs> so I know me as a player would have had a very hard time, like, snapping myself back into, like, truly being charmed. Um, and you had no problem, like it, like there was no protest for you. Like, okay, I'm charmed, and like you just <laughs> went with it, um, and that and, and played it so well. I, 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 to this day, I'm very, very impressed with uh, your 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 reaction and how you played that. <laughs> well, I mean, the group this one made it even better. Yes. Oh <laughs> yes. Hundred percent agree. Uh, I think for mine. Um, I don't know if I have, like, a single moment. It was a full, like, combat situation, but I feel like so much was going on at once, and even after so much was going on, and I know this is gonna bring up some wonderful feelings, um, but the Budai ambush, when you guys went to the house to see where Aksa, or, yeah, the, the child was, and he had the pillow that was, like, constantly exploding, and shit was happening like literally everywhere because of the radius people outside were getting hit the, the parents went down like you were rezzing at the time irene was pulling kambish away who was like what do i do she was like nothing stay here <laughs> and then, like he rolled an amazing persuasion because he always wants to help so he was gonna try and find a way to come help but because you rolled like i think it was above a 20 I was like, yeah, no, he's going to listen to Mom Irene. <laughs> There's no way he's going to do anything else. Um, yeah, Auntie Irene. And then uh, inside the building, uh, if I remember correctly, I think Valifar was there by himself initially. Like, he was in there checking it out. And then, like, that's yeah. when thing got triggered. So he yeah. was getting, like, fucked up. And everyone was, like, running into it while also taking damage like trying to save him trying to not take damage <laughs> and then, like i think there was like there's ping up pillow flinging at some point because then Balaam like broke the window and was like get it the fuck out <laughs> <Or something. laughs> it's just like all kinds of chaos and then you know like in his escape too when he ran outside you guys were kind of like desperately trying to catch up to him but like there were a few times where if not for like great play like you guys working together as a team or you know Kind of what your characters are doing at that moment people could have gone down like it was a lot of damage burst every single round uh and i think he was invisible and like hitting you guys too and like for the shitty situation that it was everyone made it out both the parents who revived nobody went down everyone was like up and uh, i remember being like so impressed but of course that that scene made everyone hate budai just a little bit more <laughs> like, does a little bit more uh but I remember that was like that was awesome. I was I was hyped for that. <laughs> it was really really cool to see you guys uh, in that situation. And then even after, because again, you know, like you guys were checking up on those who got hurt. Uh, Valen was doing like hardcore investigating. Ryland was resurrecting horses in the background. <laughs> like, like, yeah, there was there was so much going on. Uh, like not only in combat but like in character as well. Uh, yeah. So that was like that was a really like rich moment for me, <laughs> just watching everything happen, which is really cool. Um, but uh, devs. All the times I broke your bossy down. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> all the many times your stupid stun has broken my boss encounters. <laughs> I purposefully made the DC low, and I fail it like pretty much every boss <laughs> encounter. <laughs> Almost every boss encounter. Unless you run into one that is stun immune. Uh, yeah, although most of the time, like, when I am finding them, I'm not adding that. I, I don't want to say most of the time. I've never added that. I've never added immunity to stun because I was like, you know what? I don't want to, you know, like, have you stunned my boss? That's never the case. Uh, usually I'll find the monster and then it just happens to be um, immune to stun. And then when, every time you try and it's immune, I'm like, I didn't do it on purpose, I promise. But yeah, the, the Cause Venom one will forever haunt me in my nightmares. <laughs> because she had a plus 11 to her strength saving throw. Oh no, plus 10. Plus 10 to her strength saving throw. The DC was 12. She needed to roll a 1 or a 2 to fail. She rolled, and she had advantage, and she rolled a 1 and a 2. And I was like, fucking, yes, yeah, she's stunned! <laughs> 
Oh my god, that broke Take that. God. Hold that. That was fucking rough for me. Oh, like I was so impressed, but I was so annoyed at the same time. I think at that time she maybe had like either one legendary resistance and I was saving it for something else, or she ran out. Because I, I remember I like I couldn't really use it at that point. So I was like, yes, I'm stunned. <laughs> Oh god, yeah, that was Kodrono was huge in that fight. Because not only that, but after that she was mad at you and tried to hit you, but I think you were hasted, so your AC was like twenty six or some ah. fucking garbage like that. So like she would have a she had a full round where she tried to hit you and missed every time because your AC was bananas. So yeah, that was you played incredible D <laughs> that whole fight. It was very, very cool. That was also the same part fight where Rylan went down for the first time, which kind of parallels back on dubs. I remember, because uh, I think we just lost Brophy? Or we, I can't, did we lose him yet? No, 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 no. Because like, um, you went, well, like, do you mean down as in dead? I don't know. I, I got the two fights confused, because they're yeah. in the same spot. The, <laughs> yeah. the other fight was after the big... Yeah, because you died yeah. with the centipede, the, the, the archer... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people went down during the Cosmena fight, like numerous times. Uh, but that that particular one, I think that was the one in the the Shadow Fell. Yep. Yeah. I think so. Because because that was when when she died, you were really close and you were beat up because you took a lot of damage. And when she exploded, you got knocked out. Because <laughs> um, actually, you got knocked down in the middle of the fight because of your Orcish resilience. You stayed up, but then when she blasted, you couldn't get up again. <laughs> <laughs> so like she, he just like hit the ground and everyone was like, We did it! Oh shit, Codrono, man. What's up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was the first and only fight where you went down twice. Every yeah. other time he's like, maybe once, and even then the Orc Resilience keeps him up anyway. So Or not. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it, was, <laughs> it feels so fitting for him too. I can do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. No, he's he's very he's he's kind of tough to take out because your your stats are like pretty dang good, like an all around. Like, you're not dumb because I recently found out. I thought that you had like a ten for intelligence, but your intelligence is like fourteen or sixteen. So like you have good intelligence. So even if I throw like an intel like a saving throw that you shouldn't be great at, you're still pretty good. And then you have your cloak which makes you have advantage on spell saving throws which really helps as well uh, yeah just you're in general it's it, the codrono is a nuisance. all the sides felt like shots fired in legacy say that again that what? whole side felt like shots fired at the legacy crew oh no <laughs> We all have good stats. It's just the DCs are like twenty six. It's like, well, I only have a plus three to that modifier. So, nah, we're, <laughs> we're legacy comparatively speaking is a very dumb group. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Stop <laughs> all. Accurate, though, accurate. Yeah. The smartest one was our sorceress with a nineteen, uh, yep. and then I think after her is Revaya with fifteen, and then after that it's it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any negatives, but yeah. No, I, mean, well, and, and, <laughs> I was gonna say you're the. There's no one who's like outside of recently uh, Rolos, who is specifically like magic based. Like, right. oh, I can research this. Like, you guys are you guys are good in your own fields, mm -hmm. but that that doesn't happen to align with what you're going with now. You're, you're yeah. like some mysterious <laughs> type of magic that's going on. You've got all kinds of like weird stuff. So like, it just doesn't, if it was like some evil druid who was like, you know, turning the world into Pac-Man or something. Oh, then, yeah, you guys would be, <laughs> evil druid. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You, you would be in much better shape, but uh, yeah, this is yeah. an arcane based is issue. So I love how our group has been planning to go to Athos for like what? Probably a good two or three days now, <laughs> and it's like what the final hour. We're finally, like, hey, what language do they speak there? Also, <laughs> listen, we've been real fucking busy. We're always yeah. getting into fights we're not supposed to, and then like all this other shit is going on. We lost all of our cooldowns and had to take a long rest. So it's like it's not, <laughs> it's not because we're just chilling, twiddling our thumbs, waiting for the time to get there. <laughs> we're, we're we're in the middle of studying, and then bam, fucking <laughs> fortress gets attacked. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Oh yeah, those those guys haven't been around for literal centuries. Didn't think to warn you about them. What? <laughs> yep. Which also, as a fucking aside, um, Sarah the demi lich, is just kind of fucking everything up. Uh, got his hands on a card of fucking fate and decided to mess with that. So all these uh, like other things might be happening too because of that. So it's like we're just we're just trying to go from point A to point B right now. We don't need world altering <laughs> shit to come mess with our. We're trying to save the world. There's a lot of work. <laughs> so what's happening? I was. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. like, like, also, from a player's perspective, a part of me is like, Nenners, you damn liar. Because, like, like <laughs> numerous times way before these little events happened, I don't want to they're little, they're like dramatic, but they're like, these events happened. Nenners was like, yeah, you guys are kind of wrapping up soon, you know, like, we're kind of <laughs> approaching the end of the storyline. And then I'm like, Nenners, we had three months of detours, we haven't made it to Axis yet. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> what do you mean we're wrapping up? <laughs> Yeah, in real life, it's been three months. In a yeah. game, it's been like three days. Not even. Yeah, that, that's the issue, I think. Is, yeah. And to be fair, it's not like I'm throwing a thousand fights at you. It's just no, these fights are, are long yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you you're, get into them. You're throwing. Yeah. Uh, that is, you threw century old fucking combatants at us. They haven't yeah. been seen for centuries. Okay, yeah. you know. What? And they're that's like. That. You, you could have found out about these earlier um, if you'd gone a certain path. But uh -huh. um, if you yeah. had gone a certain path, he said, yes. it's our fault. It's, it's, it's our not, fault. It's not your fault. I, so, all right. No, I, I, understand earlier on your own time. <laughs> I understand your perspective. And all that free time where, characters have. <laughs> yeah, your perspective where it's like, oh, over here saving the world of... against this fucking Dimulich or whatever the fuck he was. I think this all circles back to the Lexi crew being too dumb to figure out what's happening. <laughs> 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 uh. Go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it seems like this is out of nowhere, and I totally understand your perspective. But I've had this, like these, the, that layer, the 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 mm -hmm. what's it called, the Zelostoffen have been around since I intro, like I wrote the Gelatini Quest. Mm -hmm. So way back then, I was like, okay, like what brought them here? What's their story? What's their backstory? All that stuff. Like that is the deep dark secret of that family. Um, but it's also tied into other things, which you kind of, I'm guessing, could start piecing together what that is and what path you could have taken to figure that out, essentially. Um, but that has kind of, that's been there for a bit. I just nice we're trying to get from point A to point B, so everybody could just add somebody, <laughs> and it's just. You're throwing in obstacles. To be fair, he did give you uh, uh, items to stab. I did give you a stabable or uh, <laughs> obstacle, though. Kind of, but the, the fucking big blobby thing only took fire damage, so I couldn't stab that. I mean, Look, you know, please, still honestly, like, one of the moments I almost like went with for mine was the many times we have faced a multi limb boss and you just like it looked like a kid in a toy box. <laughs> 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 The, the boss limbs just flying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's why true. it was the blob. No limbs for you to chop off. <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's why. It's unchoppable. <laughs> Good luck chopping that up. Oh my god. That kind of uh, makes me think of the next... Uh, like, I mean, I didn't have this question written down, but like, I, I, I think it might be kind of fun. Um, what is? What was your favorite... Like enemy or boss fight or something like, or maybe even uh, like a strong reaction that you had to one or something or other. Like I, I do remember I was like super hyped to see the Marilith in action because I was like, oh, those things are scary and this is really cool. Uh, and this was pre-recording days, but Nenners had the uh, Marilith hiding in um, Revias Forest, and actually this is pre both Flandy and Maya. Um, yeah. This was just like the the initial crew uh, that was. Uh, Karasu was there, obviously Revaya was there, Tyrael and Leah. Uh, and when I, because I've always known about Marylith just because of the, being a DD nerd for most of the time, but I've never fought one. So I was like, here we go, this is gonna be very exciting. And like, I just love the, the, the idea of the, like the dramatic fight between this lady who has six arms and Revaya who has two. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah, the snake lady with the fucking billion D arms. Mastica. And then she had other... Shit. Yeah, she had the Doom of Mastika. Or was it the... It was the Doom of Mastika, right? She had all the cool sword. That was my failed experiment. Um, that <laughs> was... Because as a DM, and I'm sure the rest of you can understand, is like balancing encounters is really like 
pivotal. Um, and one thing that you will always have an issue with is if you only have a handful of monsters, the action economy is going to be outside of your your reign, right? Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter how hard they hit, they can hit. You know, they breathe. The dragon breathes fire, flies around, whatever. The only like, all right, maybe three get barbecued, still probably in it. But mm-hmm. the rest of them, that's another five turns where something can happen. And that's why they did uh, legendary action stuff like that. And I was like, what if I had a Merilith with who has all six attacks, not including like reactions and stuff, um, mm-hmm. but each sword had something cool to it. So it was like that it added to that thing. And he, she started off great. She disarmed the Tyrael like right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah all right, it's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> and their arms started flying off. And I was like, God. <laughs> that was we always have a like a really interesting luck situation when it comes to character arcs because like when someone when it's like someone's character arc or like maybe it involves their backstory they always seem to do well um at the perfect time and that was Revaya's time i felt like she was rolling 700 net 20 yeah. with the morphal sword you know I mean, the the doom of Mastika was enough to like. If you got hit with it enough, you would like essentially get stun locked because uh, yeah. you kept seeing uh, what had happened. But what you guys didn't know is that if you kept seeing those things, you would eventually like start thinking you were in it to a point where you'd have to make saves to like get out of that particular like headspace, uh-huh. uh, which would count as an incapacitation, which means she would get advantage and or auto crits on you. While you're sitting there stunned. Yeah, there was some pretty nat Fluvia alone. <laughs> that thing was you guys were like I think you only got hit by someone it was it only landed twice. Um yeah because it, it, it could erode magic armor, it could break magic weapons, it was like this horrid th- thing. Yeah. If you yeah. the more you got hit with it, the worse that thing got for you guys. So yeah, that was he was very dangerous. Uh but yeah, that was a boss fight that I, I was like I was very excited for, loved the whole thing and he would have liked it even better if he didn't ruin the whole thing. Who's ruined that, that twice? She, she ruined it, it very much. in the fight, and then she did her stupid bullshit. And somehow the fucking the tw- the, the trees and the leaves told her that oh, there's yeah. a bunch of demons in her forest. The the idea was she was gonna go up and meet uh, uh, her druid, uh, the arch druid of that particular uh, gro- of her grove, and like report in. But the Marilith was gonna be her in disguise, and I was like, all right, man, you know, Rye might figure it out, but. If she doesn't, she gets to watch her, like, it was going to be a slow transformation, right? Where, like, one arm pulls a sword, another one pulls a sword, a third arm pulls another sword, fourth, fifth, sixth. And it was like, you know, you would have been in melee range and then obviously ambush uh, from there. But I could, you, you ambushed them and then dismembered her. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was very excited for that. Uh, uh, that was that was awesome. I remember actually being excited for even setting up the ambush the way we did it and yeah. how it worked out. It was really cool. I put Tyrael in the waterfall because I was like, you can't stealth on nobody, so we're mm-hmm. just going to put it where you just can't be seen. <laughs> so like, go go hang out in the muddy waterfall and just pop out when we're ready. All right? <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out. They can't, hit your, they can't hear your pots and pans through that waterfall. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Might be a little hard for you to pull yourself out because of all that extra weight, but you'll be fine. You're a strong boy. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the quiet place, exactly. When they're hanging out next to the waterfall, it's like, you can't hear nobody there, you're fine. Uh, but yeah. if anyone else has a sure. cool boss moment. Honestly, I thought of like 40 different boss fights we've had across these campaigns. Like the orphanage one was insane. The uh, every encounter with food died. Uh, the slaver one was kind of crazy. Um, even the one where we were on... We landed on a crashing ship, and uh, that yeah, <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> very awesome. Um, but yeah, we've had so many like super cool boss fights. But I think one that I would probably go with here. Damn, thinking of the other ones is like push the other one out. Uh, oh. <laughs> shit. Oh, it's okay. I had, I had it. We had a lot, but I had it. Do you want us to come back to you? <laughs> the black staff. The black oh, staff. Oh, in the ball. Because that was a fight which we didn't actually want to have, and we spent the whole time like trying to negotiate with him, and like he's was God mode and slaughtering people. 
<laughs> so we're like, hey, man, listen, we don't have to do this. <laughs> and he's just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Every turn, I'm killing 12 people. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so many things I didn't think we could possibly survive, like being singled out by a vampire. Yep. Uh, a certain vampire. Uh, yep. <laughs> Meteor swarm. <laughs> All in a ballroom, by the way. Yeah, I, I, I had no. That just seemed like how did he survive any of that? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it was, there were so many lucky things, especially that crown of stars <laughs> towards the end there. Yeah, that yeah. was clutch. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the counter spells too. Oh yeah. So many counter spells in that. Oh my god, it was counter spell galore. Yeah, <laughs> counter spell, counter. I'm gonna counter spell his counter spell. Fuck. Oh, yeah, Someone else counter spell. Roll him down uh, like twice, I think, right? Yeah, he was our tank for a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he wouldn't shut the hell up. <laughs> yeah, and this was pretty. <laughs> pretty, pretty by <laughs> and I and I res you with my spiritual rabbit that licked your body <laughs> to, to heal you again. Yep. It's so funny to think about because like rabbits, they don't do like one big lick. It's always like a series of like <laughs> yeah. you just imagine it like hopping over all nonchalant, doing its little head twitches and then <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> also, we had Scribbler there you know, on our team. That was that was exciting. Oh, yeah, yeah, Scribbler was helpful. Yeah, Scribbles. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Huh. yeah, that was that was an interesting fight. <laughs> I have two again. Let's uh, go. One for each campaign this time. Let's go. <laughs> what you got? First one I'll start with is Nenners. Um When we were in the 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 I don't remember what it was the tower, the magic tower, magic folks, trainees. Oh, no, oh are you talking about the academy and water dude? The academy, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brain's not working very well. Mm -hmm. But um, the most memorable part about it, it wasn't like 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 we were just fighting the collects there. Like they they <laughs> just come through following Kripman, I think it was. Yeah, yep. yep. And Revaya and Zolan were both getting stunned at all fucking high get out. Yeah. Um, and I remember like the the most memorable part for me was that was when I finally tested uh um, mm -hmm. uh, fucking Dragoth, because it was one of those like, well, we knew he was a big bad, but I didn't know the full extent. He was offering him, you know, gifts here and there, and he's like, fine, fuck it, let's see what you fucking got, asshole. And the, and the ramifications thereof were, were definitely what made that fight memorable. <laughs> and it was all because our main DPS <laughs> was stunned to high heavens. <laughs> I yeah. fucking couldn't roll my way out of a paper bag that fight, man. Yeah. And honestly, like it had that gone differently, like had you not, like he probably would have found that out in a different way. But the fact the way that it went down was part of what made it so memorable. Mm -hmm. And ironically, for my second answer is kind of the same thing. It's the scenario that made it like all of the bosses we've fought throughout both campaigns have been like super awesome, super like in depth, super well thought out, like super like holy shit. Oh man, we could have figured that out maybe. Oh, what the fuck? What is that? Like, you know, <laughs> had yeah. some sort of element That's of awesome to it. Yeah. Uh, but the rooftop encounter with uh, a fucking uh -huh. uh, Music Man and and then surprise <laughs> encounter with Budai, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that it was only part of our team, the fact that that was when we first saw um, Jazzy's character. Dubessa. Yeah, yeah, Dubessa, yeah. thank you. Holy shit. <laughs> that was the right. first time we saw her start doing um, Paladin abilities, uh, mm -hmm. which A, turned the fight around, and B, was like, we didn't even have time to like yeah. talk about it, because it was like, I don't know how you did that, but I like it. Keep doing it. We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, same thing. Like Just the, the level of the stakes were super high. We only had half our team there. The other half didn't know what we were doing. It was supposed to be a quick, hey, let's go find this and come back. Like, it mm -hmm. turned into a fucking dive bombing Eagle Flandy, <laughs> aka yeah. uh, Ryland, <laughs> uh, dive bombing into a fight. And the only thing he could think of to save the day was <laughs> plant growth. <laughs> <laughs> if we fall, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah we had 
we had the the musician doing his thing, uh, trying to figure out what was going on there, and then just that instantaneous, and it kind of feeds your yours from earlier, that instantaneous shift in the battlefield. We gave two fuck, like, if we had continued doing what we're doing, we probably could have taken at least one of them out. But we completely shifted gears and was like, who die, must die. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I was I I'm still surprised that that's how it worked out. Like the second he showed up, all three of you were like, "Fuck that guy!" Like we, we've hit this musician dude a few times, but this this man. The best part is like, Duvessa didn't even have a full reason. Just us saying, "Fuck that guy" was enough. She's like, "All right, I'm on the team." Yeah, <laughs> yep. Because she didn't have as much of a background as you guys did, but the two of you were like, "Nah," and then she was like, "All right, we're adjusting." We have like crosshairs here. Uh, uh, yeah, that was that was fun. That was a really really cool fight, and that's also like still a picture. I mean, maybe like someday I'll get commissioned of like Valen <laughs> riding the fucking Flandy <laughs> Eagle with uh, Dubessa and the claws, and like just dive bombing and, like the wizard. Like ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I want that as a painting, yeah. like a profile of like the the, the bar, whatever the dude is, like yeah. the bow drawn, and then us coming in, the the, the moon in the background. <laughs> like, exactly, exactly on the rooftop. As he's, like, oh. yeah. So if I remember correctly, he was taunting us on the way in too. Like, wouldn't he like, do you really want to do this? Is this how you want to start? We can just talk. Yeah, he was like, he and he shot you guys like a few times, but it wasn't to kill. Because the first shot he did was a bramble shot because he was just trying to tie up the eagle and like see what you guys did. But he hit the eagle so hard that you popped out of the floor. Yep. <laughs> that you were just like falling. Um, but yeah, when you guys were closer, he there were a few, there was at least one round where he just watched, like he wasn't actually attacking. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, he was talking to you guys. He was like, "We can chat," uh, and nobody was down for that. So he was like, "All right, let's go." Um, but yeah, I wound up being an accidental but really cool situation. That was the longest night of your characters' lives, I think. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. I think I wasn't it? Up, uh, that gibbering horror fight was also really, 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 really insane, <laughs> and not just because you had that thing in our ears. Uh, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> the entire Should duration of that fight, just me. Being... <laughs> 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 Mouth noises. Uh, but like the close calls with like Valen and Rylan being in the thing, and it was trying to like eat Treebender like forty two times, and then <laughs> you rest the sudden appearance, and we're just like, "Look out, we're fighting for it." The best one. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> The other one that was like kind of like trying to slide over everybody every turn, even though it was chains, that was just like, well, I'll eat you then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you you incapacitated it for like six rounds in a row or something bananas. Uh, so the incapacitation means it can't like act, but walking over people is still how they like eat things. So I was trying to do that because for a few of those rounds, she was the only one landing anything. Yeah. I'm trying to keep this fucking stun and you're not killing it. Yeah. Because that, that, I think that stun was like an int save, and that creature had like a negative three. So I was like, I needed a natural 20 to pass. Never happened, which is great. Like, I was, I was very amused by it. It was wonderful. Uh, but that was, that was also like really great playing on everyone else's part. Like, even though certain shots weren't landing or people might have been like struggling to do damage or land certain things here or there. Um, everyone worked like beautifully to the point where like, everyone was pretty okay. Uh, obviously the Valen Rylan was when it got to its peak of stress. Um, <laughs> but at that point it was really hurt too. So it, it wasn't like, I have the upper hand and I'm fine. Like it was not looking good. <laughs> That's also where we got the piggy bank. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, your freaking blindness, deafness on it that I could not roll out of. So, like, that actually mitigated a lot of the eye socks. Upcast. So yeah. Everyone. <laughs> yeah, that was huge as well. Yeah, you guys you guys did some pretty dope shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, I don't think I asked you. Was there a boss fight or anything? Yeah, I was about that was... to pull that. Oh, okay. Up, yeah. The gibbering horror? No. Or gibbering ball? The, the, the... The poachers or whatever. The poachers? Was it? I don't know. If you use yours. You can't just stare at me. I don't know what you mean. He he <laughs> means the, the he the animal uh the the fucking the guy having the bag right now. The the team 
Huh? Animal slavers, guys. We split up again. Uh, when Rylan went to go yeah. save Malifar, and the other team yeah. was on to get treatment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, not the poach. is very right. The like the, the animal slave ring yeah. or whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nenner's got you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> got you, bro. Don't worry. Poachers. Why, yeah. why, how come you didn't think it was the same? They're thing? not poachers, though. Because they sell their. They're, 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 like, fight stuff. Yeah, no, they're not poachers. <laughs> I got Dennis in that argument. I fight for four seconds. No, he doesn't. <laughs> they're not uh, poachers. Like, whatever. <laughs> same difference. Yeah. That was another one where you fucking saved the day because most of them failed the suggestion. That was except huge. you. And then, like, you started, like, you started putting more pressure on them. And then yeah, that's that, kind that of, like, what. He yep. also pulled Balin out of it. Yes, he did. So yep. that was, yeah. Yeah, Kodo Rono is a beast in combat. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's why he's the MVP. That's why he's the go. I feel like every boss fight we've had, we've had moments that are just like unforgettable. Like, I can't forget when we had the centipede battle and we almost lost Ryland. And then Brug. Ended the battle by like chasing her like 200 miles per hour. Yeah. And we get the last hit. No. Like, one end of the map to the other end of the <laughs> other map and outran all of us, all of us missed. And he's just like, I'm good this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he was fighting his heart out, man. He yeah. had, he, he was, he was like choking her with the axe, like holding on on the top of the set of heat, like trying to get some shots. <laughs> she threw him off. He teleported back to her. <laughs> <laughs> like that—that that was also that's another moment I almost want like commissioned or something. Because there was a time where like you, as Brug, you were trying to pull her off, and like yeah. you did manage to like initiate the grapple, but you had to like win a strength check to pull her off the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and even though she was a caster, she was really beefy. So like the two of you guys had like comparable strengths and. I barely won most of the time. But there was just like a mental image I had where she was like holding on to the reins of the centipede, like flailing around at the top, and Brug is just holding on to her too. <laughs> like the two of them were just like flailing around on top of this creature. Uh but yeah, that centipede, I remember the scariest thing about it was it had no um legendary actions, it only attacked once per turn. But if it landed, I think it was like 5d12 or something. So like if it hit, ooh. <laughs> That was rough. And then of course you get swallowed, which does more damage and blah blah blah. So yeah, that was that was an awesome fight too. I fucking loved watching you guys go for that too. <laughs> um, I, I definitely remember being that was the first time I ever like was super nervous in a fight. <laughs> Because uh, oh, really our, <laughs> we, yeah, well, we just because uh, Rylan went down a couple times, but it was always like uh, we we just lost Brophy. Like, so we've seen, like, no shit that happened. Like, there was a way to not do it. Um, and then at the time, Flandy didn't know that Kadrono didn't have a Revivify prepared because we, I forgot what, we were talking about some spell there. It's like, oh, yeah, no, I don't have that prepared. And it was like, oh, boy, he probably doesn't have the, oh, no. Oh, fuck, my character. Like, I remember having to, like, turn my camera away for a little bit because I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. when, when Rylan died, he turned his camera away. And then you sent me like a message, like a, a sad face. And then you're like, this is really intense and I like it, but like I'm also sad. And at this point, I already knew he had Reviv Revivify because yep. ever since he got that spell, he never had it not checked. He always had it on. And I remember before, like the spell that you guys were like, why don't you have that? Was like, I think it was like Mass Cure Wounds or something or some like AoE heal because he had Prayer of Healing because you got it mixed up and thought that that was like an instant <laughs> cast, but it's 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so when you guys were like, "How do you not have that?" and he was like, "Oh, I have prayer healing instead." That was what so like sowed the doubt of like he probably doesn't have many defensive things. So when you went down, I was like, "I know it's fine," because <laughs> Kodrono was running around with like seventy five percent of his health. I it's hard to fucking bring that guy down, <laughs> you know? Like and whatever's <laughs> happening with you is not great, but like you'll be fine. And actually, initially, he didn't realize you were dead because yeah, he walked yeah. up and did an AOE heal, and then he was like. Rylan should be up. Why is he not up? I was like, he's dead. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, oh, I got that for it. Next round, he'll be fine. <laughs> so like while poor Flandy was having a like breakdown, Dubs was over here like, we're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Had that demon swallow Irene. And even though she didn't have Warcaster, it was taking ridiculous damage for her. She's still holding up the Hazel. Yeah. Yup. Because you know, the thing was... Schwarzenegger in T2. <laughs> Just... And you were paralyzed and getting swallowed. Yeah. That was yep. the scariest thing was because you couldn't, you couldn't fight to get out. Or even like Misty Step or anything. You were paralyzed, but kept the haste as you were getting swallowed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That was the... Um, Brackevarum, and yeah. if, if he successfully like swallowed, swallowed you, uh, and you were in there for a certain amount of time, uh, even if you didn't die, your team would have watched as your arms would have sprouted out of his arm. Of his body. Yep. Let's yeah. remind you who is the Brackevarum that uh, Katrono has also stunned. <laughs> yes, and I had a legendary action, and I was like, "No, nah, it's fine. It won't be that bad." And then it was just a long line of crits. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched his hit points go from like 90% to 40. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, because by the time he was unstunned, uh, he he was already bloodied. And I was like, oh boy. <laughs> That's not good for me, but it's okay. Oh yeah, that was, that was just awesome. I should have legendary action, but by the time I was too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. And I think even the way you stunned him was something hilarious, too. Because, like, the weird long body, he was, like, leaning over the water or something. So his, like, back legs were on mm -hmm. one platform, and then the middle of it was hanging over the water. And then his front, like, arms were on the platform you guys were on. And then when you stunned him, we kept making the joke that he was, like, a weird bridge. <laughs> so he was, like, <laughs> oh. he was stunned there, but, like, didn't fall in. So he was just, like, a weird, like, rigid, paralyzed. <laughs> yeah, that, that was... Yeah, your stun breaks most of my encounters. <sighs> it's a DC of 12. It's not that high. I just fail it every damn time. Yono is the balancer for all the times that Fu is traumatized with us. He's always got her traumatized. <laughs> hey, remember <laughs> when uh, I I made you roll six saving throws and you made them all? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay, yeah, I do. I remember that too. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Venice, do you remember when you made all of the uh, DCs for all of your saving throws when I'm revive? Pretty much impossible. <laughs> I'm, not, I mean, pretty high. I'm not seeing a lot of dex and strength saving throws, my man. Yeah. I have plus double digits to both of those, and you're giving us constitution intelligence all day long. <laughs> and yeah, uh, hold on for a second. It's a Can three and a two for both. <laughs> Can we highlight Flandy for a second here? With Humblewood and that last fight we were in, <laughs> where he made Ninners look at him before. <laughs> that one, that one was interesting uh, because that was also one of the, the the hardest times I've had. Like in, in my sh very short DM career, it's like. Oh man, I want to be nice. I don't want to kill my team, my my, my players. Who, but they're not being very logical right now. Uh, this one, Leonard, this one's for you. Take that. Oh, that was a crit. Yeah. <laughs> to be like... fair though, even with the crit, it, I don't even think it was eight damage. Come on. Just the lead in eight minutes. Exactly that. Like you were, all you said was "Hey Nenners." You didn't even say like "Here comes my roll to attack" or like "Here comes to attack." Yeah. <laughs> hey Nenners, natural twenty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, disrespect. Honestly, he, he he wouldn't even have been there if he wasn't trying to protect our poor little bird. <laughs> yeah, he was trying desperately to protect uh, Vogui. And she tried to back up, and I remember as Igwe, you were like, no, no. <laughs> You're going to take six opportunity attacks, and then I'm going to have to drag your body out of here. <laughs> that was... Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was, it was quite the... <laughs> good stuff. Yep. Oh, God. Uh, we're, so, we're such babies in that one that, like, I'm trying so hard to keep my spell slots, because I got, like, three a day. So... <laughs> <laughs> and Gaki is like super utility. So when that bad stuff was happening, I was like, best I can give you is a bonfire. Maybe a catapult. She would be like in a show off you way. Hey, check this out. Mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, she's super utility. She's not. Yeah. <laughs> 
not really meant for the DPS. <laughs> oh my <God>. Yeah, it, <laughs> great time. <laughs> that was super fun. This was. Um, hey, you want to hold this this uh, living bond? No. <laughs> you don't know. Didn't someone else like? Didn't he even try to have someone else carry the living yeah, bomb? Yeah, he tried to have my Jermaine do it. Oh, no, no, I know. Like he started with you, and then he started with someone else, and they were both like, "No," because <laughs> he got two no's, and then he put it down, and then we were like, "It should be fine. Don't worry." <laughs> yeah, that it was. was uh... <laughs> that was the week that people were handing you bombs because. Uh... And Legacy, uh, yep. Rolo's handed you the warp stone, and you're like, yep. no, I don't want it. <laughs> yep. and I, I need you to hold this, because I, it's not going to be good where I'm going. Bear me. <laughs> yep, poor Irene. And, or Irene and uh, Euphemi, excuse me. Euphemi and... What was your Jabin's name again? My Jabin's name? Yeah. That was a stalling tactic, because I forgot to... <laughs> Anila, 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 Anila. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, was like, I was trying to stall, but it wasn't long enough. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Yeah, no, you're. That was Can you great. use it in a sentence, please? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh gosh! All right. Oh. Uh, it's kind of a throwback to your earlier question. A time someone did something that that was memorable. Mm -hmm. uh, throwing it to uh, Jazzy again uh, when she spoke to uh, Unicorn Lady. Hold on, I got a real name. Wait yep. for it. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. My leaky. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, loading. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but when she came bad. back and like Rylan put two and two together, he's like. Shoot me with it. She's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, please. Like, yeah. That whole interaction was amazing. It was like still new. Like the characters didn't know each other that well, but yeah. and Rylan was still very much a like leap of faith kind of guy. Yes. <laughs> be in certain situations, he's like, just do it. Everything's gonna be fine. She's like, bitch, arrows kill you. Yeah. No. <laughs> It worked out so well for both of your characters as well, because like her character is that very like skeptic. Like she at that time had no following at all, like did not believe or care for gods or anything. So yeah, it's like shoot me with the arrow. No, <laughs> like, why would I? I'm trying to hurt the bad guys. Why would I shoot you? Yeah. Uh, and I later on told you I was like, if yeah, if it hit you, you would have gotten healed the full, uh, depending on you know what the situation. Yeah. Well, in that situation, it would have been a uh, full heal. And yeah, Ryland was like, do it <laughs> now. I remember he was pretty damn low too. Like he was he was yeah. like one hit range. Uh, I don't think he was single digits just yet, but he was pretty damn close with everything that was going on. And I just remember him like finally was like fucking do it. But Ryland was like, No, come on, everything's gonna be fine. Just yeah. shoot me, shoot me. That was that after was, uh, uh, Tree Bender got charmed and Exactly. Yeah, yep. Yeah, because that was the other half of the coin, because that's why he was so down, because Streetbender was the one attacking him. Like, yeah, just... and you were, you were trying desperately to get the, the collar off of him, and you were rolling <laughs> booty. I remember, like, you were, it was, they were good attempts, it was just, yeah. the dice were not co cooperating at all. Uh, and I think, I think he knocked you down, too. Like, I don't, like, he didn't kill you, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he knocked you out. Yep. I, I think I had just come back, and that's when she had come through. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I, I was like, Oh come on! I'm still laying on the ground. Shoot me! <laughs> she has so many clutch moments. Yeah. yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, there's yeah. that. Um, what's it called? God, my brain is not working right now. The, uh, uh, the uh, had the ink on the goddamn first board. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Well, yeah. Try two. Or three damages. <laughs> like the reasons we were able to kill the thing. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, her damage there. Damage done a lot. <laughs> Saving Rolum from having his brain extracted. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that was next round, man. That was if you did not get out of there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Brain yep. munchos. This, this was also pre uh, Maya and Flandy, but when we had that Tabra fight, and she put Revi in that box, and she had oh, to yeah. charisma save to get in, or charisma check to get in. She had to beat his DC. Get me, yeah. and then Charisma's check to get out, and she passed both. And the DC <laughs> for both of those was like 21 or 22. So, and of course, her Charisma's 
her modifiers are plus five, but she doesn't get anything other than that. So she needed like a 16 or higher twice in a row to get in and out, and she nailed it and, and got Revi out because I was I wasn't I couldn't do nothing. <laughs> I was stuck in a box. <laughs> Because you kept blinking in and out. He's like, I got something for that ass when you come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. oh, God. I think Revive got the killing blow, too. And she was just like, you bitch-ass bitch. <laughs> that was such an emotional moment. Because like that, she got you out just as uh, as uh, Katasu and Zolan went down. Yeah. Yep. In front of Tabra. Necromancer. Yeah. So, yeah. And one of you shoved a peach... Uh, one of the healing peaches. I showed the peaches in his mouth, yeah. Yes. I was like, Nenis, listen, I've had this whole time to think about my life in this box because I haven't had actions and turns, so would you allow me to shove a peach in Leah's mouth as soon as she arrives? <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, she doesn't need verbal verbal components for her dimension uh, door, so she could be still be chewing when we're leaving, you know? <laughs> you, just, you just reminded me of the Beholder fight. And the, this is the first time I actually was in Legacy. And oh, the, yeah. one, well, there are two unforgettable things for me there. <laughs> the first oh, one is my first exposure to Katarsu and his theme song. Getting on top of the whole <laughs> jumping off his eyes. <laughs> While the hell we were going through it, he does this crazy shit to see. <laughs> and the second was just like getting imprisoned. <laughs> what was in front of <laughs> <As for us. laughs> so you in the room, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, why would you do that? <laughs> My first uh, day. I didn't have time to explain it either, so I just left you in there with this. <laughs> it felt like uh. a hazing. <laughs> oh my god. That that fight had a oh, so many god. memorable moments. My my favorite moment from that was Roland beating himself in the face. Yes, yes. Oh my god! Like, well, actually, hold on. There's two part. He beamed himself in the face, and then he had another attempt to dodge, and then have the re the mirror reflected back at him. Yep. So he yep. the natural one and just ran into the wall. <laughs> 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 Poor Roland was he ran into the pillar he was trying to run behind. <laughs> exactly. So also, like, just for some background information, because we just found some shit. Oh um, there were all these mirrors around the room that could kind of, like, reflect you know, people or spells, depending on what it was, and Roland kind of figured that out. So mid-combat, he was attempting to see if he could, like, bounce an Eldritch Blast and, you know, have it go wherever it, and it hit the enemy, of course. So... In doing so, I think you rolled poorly, or like maybe you hit the wrong one. I don't remember what it, it was. The mirror had like it, they would change. It would go from reflect to refract, and you didn't uh, know it was that refract at first, and then it shimmied and turned into reflect. And I was like, uh -huh. do an in check to see if you could tell that the angle of the mirror had changed, and he <laughs> failed that. <laughs> so the Elder's blast comes back and hits him directly. <laughs> And like this is a big dramatic boss fight. And it's just like Psh! <laughs> Oh, and yeah, after that you redirected it, it worked out, but oh my god, that should kill me. And then if you want to describe the other one where he was trying to dodge and ran into the pillar. Oh my god, yeah. So like there's this giant pillar like in the middle of the thing. Uh and he sent me a whisper. He's like, Hey man, I'm gonna try to to, to bait the incoming because it's a it's a beholder, so it's shooting rays, right? So the idea is to, to bait a ray coming at him, dodge out of the way and have the, mi the mirror reflect, because obviously he just painfully figured out that it's in reflex st status. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, that's no problem, man. You just gotta roll a uh, check to see if you know. This motherfucker rolls a one. I couldn't do anything. Like, you you just run right into the pillow. Like, just, this one of those things, like, I, I just picture, you know when you're spotting something too long and you're moving with too much confidence where you haven't checked where you're going? It's one of those situations where you're like, you just run inside sideways, you turn too late. Boom. <laughs> Oh, shit. And then you get hit by the beam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It was a great idea. I loved it. I just, I, I wanted to work with it. I just, I, I can't do anything with a one. <laughs> <laughs> uh. God damn. Yeah. I remember that, that fight pretty much wrote poor Revaya out. She would, she like basically couldn't really do much. Uh, because like the, the mirrors could reflect like she could run from like one mirror to the other or something and go that way. But it wasn't, like, in terms of speed, she couldn't run fast enough because you considered difficult terrain. And then I was like, no, I'm a ranger, so I don't have difficult terrain or anything. You're like, yeah, but it's good. So you still do it. I was like, great. 
So now I can run 20 feet per round and this thing flies. Go, guys, go! I'm going to cast spells and hang in the back because I can't do shit <laughs> right now. Yeah, that was... I think the only thing where, like, she really felt grounded. Because even Zolan, like, he could jump and then kind of, like, mitigate that difficult terrain. But, like, I, I could not. There was... I was kind of rooted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you I remember in. when Rolos and Afra were underneath Weehawken? And, uh... Yes. Karasu was the one that got the task of rescuing Harvey the half <laughs> <laughs> That all could be back. <laughs> Oh. Oh, that was great. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> oh, God. Everything about that went wrong. <laughs> one thing I, I just bringing up kind of soon in general. One thing I, I always loved about like Dubs in, in your fights is he very often like takes in the whole situation and like what's on the map and is like, if that's the bad guy, I'm gonna go over there and stab that that generator. I don't know what it does, but it seems important, so I'm gonna put my sword in it. <laughs> 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 Which like it works out really well because he winds up like foiling some shit and like you know changing things for the fight. But like as that happens, usually as he's off doing that, Revaya's going after the boss. So it's like I'll I'll tango with him while you basically stick a wrench in his bad guy machine or whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> and it always works out. It's great. I remember like, oh my god. The uh, the natural twenty start on Tabra, I think it was right. Yes. It was Tabra. Yep. He had the wall of force, and he natural twenty your your um plex. What was that like? Your tether, tether, tether. Yes. Yeah, and it shattered part of it, and got that, and you like pinned the dude on the other side to the inside of the like wall of force. Yeah, yeah. No, kind of seems awesome with like I don't know, like taking in the environment and working with it, uh, which is why like I always knew you'd be great as a utility player as a cleric, because. Uh, I don't know, you're, you're pretty good at reading the battlefield and being like, what should I do at this moment? And it, it usually works out quite well. <laughs> uh, the moves you did during that slaver battle yes. were insane. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, I was at the spell slots round two. So I was. <laughs> well, that was your, what, third fight of the day? <laughs> yeah, it was. I was tapped. I had nothing left. That was the wrong yeah. day. That was a rough day for those characters. Good God. Um, all right. Uh, we've, we've talked quite a bit on this one question prompt, which was awesome. Uh, no complaints at all. And again, if you have any questions that are popping up as we talk, fucking feel free. Um, <laughs> hello. D well, disabled Tev? Disabled Tev? I don't know how to say that. No, disabled veteran. Disabled veteran. Uh, Got it. I was trying to turn that last part into a tavern, but the V was in the wrong place. But hello and welcome. Um... <laughs> There are no dragons, only cheese here. Uh, this is just our kind of chill chat <laughs> show. Uh, <laughs> so but now that Foos knows you're afraid of dragons, uh, you can expect one to arrive at your doorstep at some point. Not true. I've only had you guys encounter two dragons, and one of them killed the other. So you're 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 doing well. Didn't Flandy die during that? <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was the last part. You know, was, everything was fine. Everything was going right. Fucking, the burrowing one decided to be on our team for a minute with that wonderfully beautiful persuasion check and then fucking vomits acid everywhere or whatever the fuck it was. So, okay, hold on. In my defense, it was collateral damage. She was not collateral damage. She was not aiming for you. She showed up and then saw that her her bitch ass rival was there and that he was in her territory. So she was like, "I'm gonna take this bitch out." Um, but in jumping on him, her acid splash went a little too far and it just happened to splash on you. I think you hit Crogiano too. It hit someone else. But you were at like splash. <laughs> yeah, you guys were at like you were at six hit points. You were fine. And like so you went down again. And actually that that particular situation was when I came up with that homebrew for the exhaustion uh yeah. overnight. Because in that in a span of like a minute, Ryland was unconscious three times. <laughs> and I was like, that's not good for the body. <laughs> right? like, like I know there's magic and you know, like that's the fun of it, but that was when I came up with that system of like roll for your uh, your long rest to see if you actually like recover or if you're gonna be a little fucked up the next day. Uh, but yes, no, that dragon was trying to kill the other dragon and she did and she didn't mean to hit you. I don't think she apologized, 
but she did say that she wasn't eating free. <laughs> <laughs> it, she did to Ryland's eyes, so that's all that matters. Yes, yes. <laughs> yep. That's the most food thing to do. You run in and smack somebody and don't apologize. <laughs> do we, we talk about the uh, moonbeam? <laughs> oh, the moonbeam! The, okay, poor, poor Ryland. His moonbeam has betrayed him in this fight. Actually, oh, worst. I, feel like, I feel like you you betrayed yourself. I guess I don't know. But like, congratulations, you played, you played yourself. yourself. Yeah. You, I've only rolled above an eight for my damage on moonbeam. I think once in the entirety that he's had that damn spell. <laughs> The saddest one was when you first arrived and you were trying, like, you made your moonbeam hit, like, every round. And it was, like, four, five. Two. <laughs> yeah, two. You got two ones once. It was helpful when we were in the desert at night and nobody could see in the dark except for Valen, I think, and Riley. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it had its, its, its ups and downs, but that particular fight, um, your own moonbeam knocked you down low enough to get knocked out by the boss. Yep. <laughs> And that was good old get, got a glass brain. And he had a, a brain damage uh, chart that I had yeah. to roll on. Because you're the worst person ever. See how his fight would go. It was great. It was fun. Everything was fine. No problem. Everything was fine. Everything's fine. Uh, Everything's fine. Just fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, gosh. Um, all right. I have another question for us. And then uh, we'll probably like rapid fire. And then start wrapping up pretty soon, uh, just so it's not for super, super long. Um, again, anybody who has an answer, feel free to hop in immediately. Uh, but is there a moment uh, where you were very surprised about a turn in the story um, that happened to your characters or perhaps in the background, um, but just sort of like a turning point for maybe a plot point or even something you were experiencing at that moment? Uh, it's it's not my full answer, but I want to like start us off with like a quick reference um, to the doppelgangers running in on the gelatini uh, household because yeah, that was some shit, man. That was some, that was some horse shit. I don't appreciate it. Um, so we're hanging out with a bunch of changelings. They're very nice. They have a big old mansion. They got a lot of land. They're real, real nice. Very friendly bunch of individuals. Um, but we're hanging out, and suddenly all their servants are being real weird. And then they kind of like turn at us like we're in a horror movie, not saying anything. And we're like pretty sure, pretty, pretty sure these, this isn't the usual serving crew. They, they, they're, they're acting a little strange right now. Uh, and then I was like, hey, Nanners, remember that Hunter's Mark I, I put on someone like 45 minutes ago that I was fairly certain was a doppelganger? Where, uh, where, where does that seem to be right now? And you're like, it's on the second floor. I was like, oh, good. <laughs> that, that encounter was was amazing because for me, I think I was like super sick with COVID. And so I came in halfway in the session. Yeah. And it was like, hey, there's two doppelganger assassins standing over you. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're hangover logging. Yeah. Hangover logging. Yep. Where yep. Are, why are there two doppelgangers standing over my body? I don't that was the night that you weren't feeling well, and you were like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of like, kind of float by here." Then you're like, "No, nah, I'm fucking put on yeah. my fucking shirt. all right, fucking I'm back. Yeah. You're not killing me off screen, damn it." Yeah, COVID was whooping my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! We're like, get up and they're like, you know what? I'll, I'll come check things out. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Bitch, said, what now? <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, also, if, if anyone's like sitting there thinking about their next uh, their answer to that one, <laughs> oh, I got it. Okay. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go for it. How, the no motherfucker is still alive. Not only oh. is he still alive, <laughs> but he's on team team Blanco Eyes. He's on what? team Blanco Eyes. Correct. What? what? So this is no that destroyed partially my village, like twenty something years ago. Who should be dead by natural causes, at least, if not through treachery <laughs> of his own kind, is still running around. Then that, that opens so many questions for Valen. So he's like, "Okay, was this is a test this whole time. Who's in it? He's allied with the, the the queen. Was the queen behind the whole thing? Do I have to go kill her too now? Like, it's just like <laughs> there's so many. Like, it's to the point where he's like, I can't even deal with it right now. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I will investigate this further, but I, I just I cannot, given what we have right now, worry about that." <laughs> That I think was also fun to see that in you and Valen, where it was like this 
spawns about 65 questions that I don't have time for. So <laughs> I'm just going to log that away and be paranoid, like panicking behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll figure some things out as we go. But for right now, I got something else to concentrate on. I never, never expected you to go look in on that, ever. And like, I don't like, if you ever rewatch that particular section, you can see me stalling for time because I had this <laughs> plan but I hadn't thought about it in a real fucking long time. <laughs> Cause it was just a nugget in the background. So like, I remember when you said that, I was like a certain, a particular no, a no, yes, a no. <laughs> like it's just me like, <laughs> just like trying to add for time. Cause I had to go look at my notes. Cause I was like, I don't, I know something's up. I gotta go check it out. Uh, and yeah, so um, the thing that is a, a big, a big uh, part of Valen's life is not dead. And is running around with the enemy, and it's not good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was. I did not expect. Oh no! God damn it, Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the question again? Um, the question was just like a surprising turn in the plot or storyline that happened either like as you were, like in front of the character, or even kind of like behind the scenes. Just. Oh. Kind of like a plot twist that was like, Ooh. oh shit. Oh, that's easy. When uh, Irene's parents got re There it is. We do Kentucky Fried. What do you mean? I mean, what do you they mean? They died by the sword. Nah, I got something better for you. <laughs> I, I still think my favorite has been the change in reaction. Like, initially, she was like, like she was, she she no shit thought like you, you twisted it on purpose. She's like, but but I saw them die. Yeah, they, they were or I saw them dead. They were they were dead when I got. They were alive. Like she just the, the wave of emotions. I was like, yeah. wait, what? Holy fuck! And then once she realized that you misread stuff, she's like, ah oh, man, nah, fuck you, fools. You're so traumatic. Yeah, and I was also this like this is another testament to the incredible role player that Maya is. Cause like I, I actually fucked up. Cause I, when I was reading her backstory, I thought her parents died in the fires, but that was a sentence right before she said that they were slain, as in they were killed in combat. So I misread that and thought that they died in the fires, and then maybe something else was slain. Whatever, I misread it. So I had it as the illusion of your parents died in the fire, and there was some trauma that could be brought up that way as, as we all like to say um but maya knowing that that was not quite correct just yes ended the situation and rolled with it and made it even actually kind of made it a really rich situation because she like the character would also know that that's wrong but the influence of the illusion makes it confusing and sad anyway you know like yeah. even to think that that could possibly be a thing so a tribute to maya as a player because that was expertly handled for my fuck up. So like it worked out. I mean I don't know how I feel about saying it worked out. <laughs> it did. I think it did. I think it did wonderfully. Oh my gosh. You do. Oh my god. Yeah. Poor girl is like broken. <laughs> a broken I, shell of a person. Poor Irene, she's having a bad time, but it's, she'll make it. It's okay. Um <laughs> Can we give an honorable mission? This is not really like a gravity twist or like our minds are broken or anything. Mm -hmm. But when Rolo's asked Serial if he could fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way that whole thing played out. He summoned the fucking dinosaur, the dirtiest dinosaur that has ever existed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this little backstory uh, that was when the big giant ship came crashing into the city almost and we decided to go up there and investigate and it looked like we needed to do a quick rescue of people and so Cheerios was taking too many seats on the dinosaur <laughs> so well, that was just a quick check like hey you you can fly right like you, i i could kick you off and pick those guys up we good <laughs> i've okay. seen you do something like that before you're missing a key part of it for <laughs> you are here. you are he this is all right. So, first and foremost, <laughs> those of you who don't know what a Quetzalcoatlus is, Quetzalcoatlus, don't not feel Quetzal. bad because I didn't either. I thought he meant Quetzalcoatl, like the Yucatan bird thing. God, uh, it's Quetzalcoatlus. It's like this really big, super goofy dinosaur, um, like with a neck that's like sixty percent of its body. Um, he summons this awkward creature in the middle of a city. 
tells the paladin to get on and to hold on, right? So they both get on and the, and the, the, the creature takes flight. Mm-hmm. Now, he's currently basically warging through his familiar, so he can't see. So the paladin is now holding him motorcycle style, right? To make sure he doesn't fall off the thing, right? They are probably like two, three hundred feet in the air, right? When he comes back and is like, with his plan, hey, you can fly, right? <laughs> it's like, and if I can, I'm just gonna fall the three hundred feet to my. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll just take the thirty d six or whatever the hell that ends up being. Mm. Oh my god, that was hilarious! But yeah, just the the shock in his face, like, I mean, yeah, I can glide. <laughs> I only oh have wings for like a minute. I don't know how this is gonna work. Oh god, because he's an Asmar, so he's able to uh, sprout wings. But yeah, that was uh it killed me. That was so much so so funny. That was amazing. It was a legit question. What? <laughs> oh my god. At least so, he asked. I mean he didn't just put test the theory. Uh, he did, <laughs> but yeah, that was oh yeah. my god. He seeing Tyrell be like, uh what? <laughs> well also like that. Right? <laughs> another thing was a roll, excuse me, it was fucking incredible. Yep. Oh my god. I, um, this wasn't quite a, um, like a, a, I don't know, plot point turn or something. Uh, but seeing Ryland, uh, Flandy, the character, the, the player and the character, I guess, at the same time, uh, react to this is before you kind of had the information you have now on like the promised stuff and the K names. Oh. But when you were with your mom and you're like, just don't name anything with a K. And I was like, oh, it hasn't hit yet. Because I was like, her name starts with a K. Her name is Kahia. So I was like, yeah, Kahia looks at you and it's like, what's wrong with K's? And you're like, ha, ha. oh. <laughs> like, just like panic. And I remember, I think it verbally hit Maya first. Because like your camera wasn't showing, but I heard you go, ooh. And then Ry- or Flandy and Nenners reacted at the same time, both like, Oh no! <laughs> uh, like that. Record scratch and everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so you're probably exactly. wondering how we ended up here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh god, that was fantastic. But was awesome. um, is there any other plot point that anyone wants to mention? Plot turn or plot twist? Because uh, Mark asked us a question. Wait. Yeah. Humblewood. Humblewood. Bird. Who wants right. to burn down the force and collect the insurance money? <laughs> you don't know yet. And the Mila yep. and the turtle were investigating that bar. Uh. Yep. <laughs> I'm not sure about uh, th- those financials in this in that city is very sketchy. We really need to. I want to dig down with my nine intelligence to the books. Do uh-huh. not it. Well, I mean, good. you come into a tavern and you're like, "Yo, is anybody on fire?" <laughs> it's like, can I help anybody? He's like, well, that guy's drunk. You can go and help him out, I guess. <laughs> no, is anybody like on fire or something? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> this is a establishment. <laughs> Man, this is the Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was fucking hilarious. Um, uh, what, did, what did Mark ask? Uh, he was asking. Uh, I just scrolled back up. Hold on. <laughs> Um, what was the most traumatic encounter? <laughs> oh boy. Oh, uh, everything was I have one for Revaya. Um, it was the Tabra fight when uh, Zolan went down. Oh. Mm. Ever since that fight, she has not really had him up against the bosses. Like he's been very much oh, like take care, taking care of the little guys or, you know, trying to destroy you know the environment or something, but it's she. She's never had him on a, a main boss ever again. <laughs> that that fucked her up hard. <laughs> <laughs> Everything worked out, but she was. Mm, that's her best friend. He almost was changed by a necromancer. Not cool with it. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's Revaya's most traumatic encounter. Uh, Valens was the uh, what's it called? Hey. Well, it was a, the first one was Rylan going down in that horrible situation, um, which was like the cat. Uh, which time? That doesn't matter. Yeah, which down. time? Yeah, with all the undead uh, <laughs> running around when we were in the Shadowfell. And he, like, you were by yourself. Nobody was around. 
uh, he had a dimension door in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And was basically like, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, there's no <laughs> way I'm seeing this out. But at least I can get him up kind of situation. Like, that was his trauma going. Um, that was the Shadow Spell caused Venom fight. Yep, yep. Because uh, that was the Bad Ryland was trying to absorb Good Ryland because you got knocked out and yeah. you were like all by yourself in that corner. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then second trauma, most recent one was the uh, seeing tree bender like that mm. uh, in the yeah. cell, and that's why he's like, "Nope, we're starting this right now. I have two spell slots. One's being burnt right now." <laughs> 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 Yeah. We had uh, uh, doppelgangers in the shadow fell. Each of us had a shadow version of ourselves, and we all had to fight each other <laughs> at the big bad boss fight. Yeah, bad Ryland. Uh, I, Dryland. I, <laughs> Dryland, yeah, because I, I messed with everybody's names. Some are better than others, but I called Ryland Dryland because that was stupid and I liked it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the shadow fell versions of themselves were in that fight. So they had to fight the bad versions of themselves while fighting the big boss. Uh, and it was not, not a very, very good time. And for Ryland, uh, well, for all of them, if any of them got knocked out and their bad version was there, they would try to uh, like assimilate and like take that person's body and their friend would be no more. There would be no way to resurrect them if that succeeded. So Ryland was downed, and Dryland was trying to, like, initiate that. I, I think in my notes, it takes, like, three full turns. Um, and they do have to make, like, checks on the way. So there's ways to interrupt it. It wasn't a, like, boom, they did it one turn, your character's super dead. Um, but he started it, and he was one round in. So he needed two more rounds to succeed. And Ryland was nowhere near the rest of his team, because it was a really, really big fight. There was a lot of yeah. shit happening in, like, every single corner. So the, the, the very strong wizard dimension doors over to save him, and he did. Uh, and both yep. of them survived. <laughs> but, yeah, it was rough. <laughs> uh, but that was uh, that was the fight you guys lost Brophy, though. Yeah. yeah. That profoundly changed Irene. Uh, but it wasn't the most traumatizing. The most traumatizing is the one that just happened. Because really? of the fight in which she lost all of her closest friends. Granted, this is all mental. Yeah, yeah. But like, because she failed every role, she lost so many people. It was and three. Had to go through all these personality shifts. Well, three, but like. Yeah. No, no, you're you're fine. <laughs> losing, it, it was one thing to like lose, you know, um, Kimmin because she's not very close to him, so it didn't really hit very hard. But then Valen's gone. And Valen, honestly, is one of the things that, like, kind of keep her in check when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, the Phoenix within. And, <laughs> and then, right after that, losing Rylan, and I think she just broke at that point. <laughs> and yep. is now a whole ass supervillain. So... <laughs> and then... I, I, it's amusing that every time she goes into uh, Nierja's head, she comes out more fucked up. I know, right? <laughs> We're just having like therapy, and everyone else is getting worse. But, like, <laughs> but uh, just to answer well, your question, Mark Songs, uh, in this particular fight, uh, this demon had like a big cone attack, and every time he did, everyone had to roll an intelligence saving throw, and if they failed, they would have to roll on another chart that I had, which had each of their friends' names on it. So whatever number they rolled, the illusion that would happen would be that their friend died. Not in this particular fight, but that they died like in a previous encounter that maybe it was close or something like that. Uh, and then they had to, they couldn't target or see that person in the fight until they passed the, the, the role, basically. And <laughs> if you failed more than one, then you probably couldn't see more than one person. So poor Irene, she lost. Yeah, the, the player, <laughs> the player had no idea. Um, so Irene genuinely believed that three of her friends in that fight were not there. She couldn't target them. She thought they died previously, but the sorrow and trauma were being then <laughs> instead. So poor. Yeah, she went through three stages, and if I could summarize, I think it was the first one when Kim got lost was rage, because then she started going super DPS mode, and then. When she lost Valen, that became grief. And then when she lost Ryland, it became nihilism. 
Yeah. And then the best part about all this, uh, to add to the trauma, um, <laughs> right after we finish this fight, we come back out to figure out who the fuck we're fighting next. One of which is literally the liquor of tears. <laughs> <laughs> that's Rylan that's... as our spiritual guide into who the fuck we're fighting next. <laughs> Meanwhile, like weird questions are being asked that are distracting him. He's fighting one of the other demons that we don't know about just yet. Um, while this is all going on, he's like, Hey, which one are we going to fight? This is kind of important. One of them literally like feeds on tears. And this one is crying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nah, yep. it'll be fine. I can't tell you. Just go through a door. Yep. <laughs> you have a terrible persuasion of her. No! I think it's great that she tapped out for this one. She's like, I can't handle it. <laughs> like, I can't oh. imagine, like, Irene going into that fight. <laughs> it's good that Kandar got the steering wheel right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, Rylan was definitely, like, he wanted to help out Irene, but we, we were on a mission to we, uh, he didn't know how much time we have in this place. Like, demons are collecting in Nerja. We're like, it's fine. It was rough, but we will talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just need to know if you're going to be <laughs> uh, an issue in this next fight or not. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but he can't ask her that. So he's like, who who, who are we fighting again? Because <laughs> I'm tracking here in my book of knowledge. This one says bad things for us. This one says less bad things. I'd rather fight the less bad <laughs> Uh, that that was a very rough fight as well. Um, that was one was like in general. I have so many that I'm like I'm very excited for these things. Um, also, because like that was a mechanic I've never seen before. So I was like, this is gonna be kind of a pain to keep track of because each of you have to keep track of like who you can and cannot see. Because I can't I can't micromanage that much. You know, like I give you the information, you have to do with it what you will. Yep. <laughs> um, but I thought it was interesting, especially I think. You know, Plandy, you were talking about how you were panicking with Nenners, where it was like, if if there's a situation where the healers can't target someone who's really bad because they think they're dead, that's very dangerous. <laughs> you know, like, this is really scary. Um, yeah, there were... And, there were oh, few- by the way, the things we're fighting, if you die near them, they literally eat your soul. Like, no revive, no try again, no fuck it. Like, wish. That's it. Correct. Yeah. So it was, it was, uh, it was pretty bad, pretty high stakes in many ways. Uh, but... <laughs> Yet again, Kodrono kind of fucking ruined everything for me, because uh, every time he tried to back away so he could do some other shit, your fucking sentinel stuck him in place, and then I was like, well, can't do that, I guess I'll stay here. <laughs> sentinel is worth his weight. Oh my god, yeah. He didn't even... Spoiled my plan, yet again. He didn't even, like, I don't think he even got a chance to, like, I don't think you, no, you didn't stun him, you didn't, you didn't get a chance to, but instead you ruined it another oh, way, so that was great. <laughs> Yeah, oh, stuff. yeah, I see microcosm the God's question, and uh, I have a certain cleric, Minners, that uh, oh, yeah. has been... He asked, uh, is there a character you have uh, built that yeah. is just waiting for the right story? What character are you itching yeah. to play? We have a certain car- uh, cleric that uh, mm-hmm. you know, I built using Pathfinder. You know, interesting, because he's always trying to get me to play Pathfinder. <laughs> right? He's always like, hey, you find oh, them past girl. Yeah. I found them paths a long ass time ago, but I never get a chance to explore them. Because oh he never runs the story. Uh, <laughs> the yeah, all right. So we. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are such a small crew now, though. Like, if, if you leave, then I kind of have to cancel. And then it's like, yeah. if one of you is gone, then I don't want to run the other one because then it's just like two people. Right. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So, like, yeah. it's for. I, I hear you. And no, I'm just teasing you. Maybe we'll, yeah. yeah at some point, I, 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 love that the chemistry between your character and Fuse is hilarious. Uh, I, I, I really, really enjoy that. Also, uh, here's some background information. Do you want to tell them about the, your your cleric that you were you were playing and what we were doing a little bit? Yes. Yeah. You mean when you said that my character's grandma was a hoe? Uh, yes, that, <laughs> that character in particular. I was playing a very abrasive goblin monk. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I have this cleric who uh, is like a peri-blooded Asimar, uh, meaning she has one fallen celestial ancestor and other normal celestial ancestors, and they're pretty much com- competing in her mental space and like their influence on her. So she has her sanity is not there. <laughs> um, it's like she's not evil, but she's she's good sometimes. 
<laughs> you don't know what you're getting with her. She's a faithful of the God and that this uh mm -hmm. this I don't know how to really pronounce it. I think it's very dualistic and can be either very benevolent or very destructive, depending. Mm -hmm. And so she's kind of like that. And her personality is very exuberant and stuff like that. She's very open, honest, and generally happy go lucky, even though clearly not not right up there. <laughs> <laughs> And so she meets who's this goblin and is very candid about her ancestry. And that leads to, uh, well, I'll let Foos explain. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I, I played a, uh, a goblin monk um, <laughs> who was kind of, uh, like, I, I think she was, like, way of the Cobalt Soul, but we kind of changed that because obviously the Cobalt Soul doesn't quite exist in this world. Um, but in general, she was kind of like an intellectual monk, so she mostly read books and had like you know zero understanding of social cues or anything like that and was very like i will just say what i think and what i notice so um her name is sister ballista because since she's tiny when she hits me it feels like you're getting hit by the little ballistic shot you know so, like, so uh, yeah sister ballista um found out about the background of uh her character and immediately upon hearing that she was like a succubus or whatever she was like oh so your grandmom is a hoe, and that's how you got abilities. That's that's how it works out. And then <laughs> we're also hanging out with a um, a sorcerer who is a dragon uh, lineage. So he had like scales on him, and she was like, "Man, do you need some lotion? Is that psoriasis? Like, what's wrong with you?" <laughs> so she was just like really abrasive with everyone, and then like asking just unnecessary questions. I remember she was just like, "So are you like attracted to dragons? Like, is that a?" That family thing, or like, what is that? How does that work? <laughs> so yeah, she was um, she was a little uh, abrasive that way. Uh, but to kind of answer Microcosmic God's question, uh, I I actually have a like holy-ish character that I'm very interested in playing. Uh, I imagine it might be the next uh, after Legacy. I think that's when I'll introduce this character, but. Uh, I have a lot of very cool fun ideas. Yeah, I'll do Pathfinder. You can do even Oracle if you want. How I, holy are you? I also told Nenders about another uh, idea I had of um, a character with memory issues. Uh, yep. That like, and a part of it was because like I I tend to be like either the quartermaster or the person who's like, make sure we do this, and don't forget that, and whatever. So I was like, I kind of <laughs> want to not do that, but not because I'm lazy, but because my character did. <laughs> Like, I'm looking forward to, and the way I was planning it was, like, maybe they were a warlock or something, and they didn't realize it, but they, like, traded in their memories for whatever they got, so they actually don't know that they're, you know, mentally Every time handicapped. you cast a spell, you lose a memory. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, like, they're gonna be dumb as fuck, and, like, uh... not it, but I was like, no, no, you know I love some dark shit, so feel free to make it some, like, horrible, traumatic thing that happened in their past. I will leave that up to you. But yeah, I have a holy character I want to play that I'm still developing, like, personality-wise. Um, and then my forgetful dumbass who's like, everything's fine! I'm a happy-go-lucky person! I'm also real stupid, but I'm gonna have a great time. Um, but I'm looking forward to those. But, uh, oh, we got, uh, what level do you guys start at? We? It really depends. I, I don't think we've ever started at level one. I think yeah, you have. Get out of here. I thought we started nope. at two. Nope. We were you just level up pretty quickly. <laughs> All right, we only started at one once, and it was for Humblewood, and it lasted one session, maybe one, two, one and a half. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think for difficult terrain, I started you guys at five, and then Legacy is kind of cheating because it was a campaign that we started when we were in high school, and as you can see, we are not in high school anymore. So those characters <laughs> leveled. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we very rarely start at one, and. So I know for me, guys, it, I'm cutting class to be her. Uh, yeah, exactly. I like speak for yourself. It's Labor Day, but I am still like not in class right now. No, but, <laughs> um, as a DM for me, I love throwing like really kind of tough boss fights at people and stuff. So I think I get uh, I get more fun out of it, and hopefully my players do too by having more abilities uh, on their side. So I, I enjoy seeing what they can throw back at me. So that, that's that's usually how I go about it. Yeah. Do we get better? Yeah. Sorry. No, the sorry. Pathfinder one's gonna be two or three. It'll be low, but not like super low. Yeah. I want you guys to like have your subclasses or what you think <laughs> you're gonna like. Cause, you know, if it's like, oh, it's everyone's level one. I, I understand the 
the appeal to that. It's like it's a new beginning, like in the Hobbits and the Shire and all that. And like, mm -hmm. but still, like you could fall down a flight of stairs and die. Like there, it's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, like there's it's just some mundane shit can take you out, and like the dog bites you, you catch some disease, <laughs> you're dead. Like it's just there's not a lot of, uh, and I mean, yeah, I guess that puts fear into players and stuff, and it really comes down to roles too. I mean, you could have a fighter and two wizards and if the wizards are rolling better than the fighter like he's not going to have as enough of a bonus to really make the difference you know what i mean it's just like weird shit happens at that level but um mm -hmm. in terms of like 5e i would prefer third because at least everyone has their subclass it's like you're, you're somewhat established at your class i like that like you're not an expert by any means you're not resurrecting people from the dead you're not doing crazy stuff like that but mm -hmm. you're at least like hey this is I feel like that point, like you, you, you're an undergraduate or, or graduating undergrad. Like, right? you know what I mean. Like, you, you, you have a set point of skills that you're now gonna apply to the world. Um, but to answer Mark's question, um, uh, the one I actually I really want to play uh, uh, is it the was one I made. Cosmic for... God, not Mark. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the uh, was the was it the second goblin or the first goblin I made for your campaign, Foos. Um, oh, so I, yes. I typically I make sure my characters are in the very least least useful from a combat perspective. Uh, I love tactics and tactical games and stuff. And I, like having somebody useless just bothers me. Um, and has a habit of going very dark. <clears throat> I don't know what you're talking about. So uh, <laughs> I had a uh, peace domain berserker barbarian multi class, and the idea was that he was primarily a barbarian kill the peace domain cleric and as punishment the god made him essentially like follow or you know become a peace domain cleric himself uh so and they kind of see the error of his ways too right like hey you're kind of an asshole right um so the idea is like in my mind is that he won't really get better it's just gonna be <laughs> like Oh, it's gonna be a struggle, but he'll never get over it, right? Like I love those kind of stories where it's like he's trying, but you know he's not really gonna make it. So um, the way I have it is like he'll try to be peaceful, like try to you know do the peace thing, but he'll have triggers, and if he hits those triggers, then it's Zerker mode, and, like, <laughs> and then he has to like atone and he'll lose his player power <laughs> for a bit or something, get it back, get triggered again, and it's just like it's a constant battle throughout his life. Uh, and it's it's terrible from like a combat perspective because it's just like I mean really the cleric that can barely can maybe heal depending on his temperament. <laughs> and it's otherwise a melee. Like, it's terrible from like a teammate perspective, but from a character, I think it's interesting. But it's amazing for everything else, and I I fucking love it. Uh, but I will be right back. I gotta pee. You guys carry on. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, okay. Dennis, you want you want to tell the class about the time you tried to introduce Vecna to Humblewood? <laughs> so, uh, Trendy was. Um, <laughs> Whenever anyone asks me to, to to make characters for the game, I, I have to apologize. I'm gonna make like ten. I it's just well, what I do. Off, I think you should mention that Humblewood is a largely um very lighthearted uh, <laughs> setting. No, it's super serious. It's it's a very lighthearted, very cute, adorable, awesome setting. Uh, and my dark ass was like, yo, I want to be a death domain cleric, and I was like, there's no, and of course, in, in Humblewood, there's no like really true death domain like gods. So it's like, what if I'm, what if I'm worshiping Vecna as, and but like he doesn't know it's Vecna, right? He'll call him Navik, and he's like trying to bring him to the world to like help do who knows what, and would just slowly be, you know, furthering his goals through whatever means he decides to communicate with me. Uh, and then I was like, yo, I, I need to slow down, man. It's too much. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm bringing the goddamn devil to Sesame Street right now. I need to fucking pump my brakes. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. The uh, best part is I was totally uh, fanning the flames there. I was like, sure, let's do it. Fuck yeah, bring it in. Yeah, it was <laughs> going to be great. It's, Nobody's going to fucking be the... It's going to be a hook from a right field. <laughs> I just, I mean, I love the idea of like a, like a COVID. He like, a, it was Corbin, right? Corbin. Uh, you said uh, I said COVID. He, yes. He said COVID. The word has been in the zeitgeist for a bit. Uh, anyway, uh, he was going to be that one of those crow, kind of like a Kenku, but more crowish. Um, yeah. With big ass scythe. Like, Oh, like that would have been awesome. I just, I love yeah. the idea of it, but I was like, nah, I can't. It's too much. <laughs> it would have been great. It would've, everything would have been fine. Yeah. I like Yigwe. Um, he's, he's a serious challenge for me to play. Cause he's everything I'm not. Uh, to actually answer uh, Mark's question, which was uh, the most traumatic encounter, uh, it's a twofer. Um, 
since she isn't here to defend herself, uh, I'll start with the uh, Nemesis campaign. Uh, I already mentioned it t- tonight, but uh, when he invoked uh, Dragoth and he fucking dusted half the people in the however many miles, that, that was actually really big for my character. And uh, he didn't really display it very well, <laughs> but uh, he was going through a lot of shit mentally trying to figure stuff out, which kind of led into the team potentially voting him off the island. Uh, which was kind of kind of lead into now uh, Micro's uh, question, <laughs> leading down a path that would have turned uh, relatively dark, where he would have started uh, making buddy buddy with uh, Dragoth since everybody else kicked him out, and he literally had nothing else left. So he's like, "All right, well, fine. You're offering me gifts. Fucking, let's send it. Let's get those episodes." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get the episodes out, yo. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, oh, God. Also, and then, that you said you were not going to do something because I wasn't allowed here to defend myself, and I appreciate that. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> and now to attack Fuzi. Uh, <laughs> for Fuzi's campaign of the most traumatic event uh, was... Brandon wanted you to look at him when he rolls his hair. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. <laughs> Make eye contact with me. <laughs> uh, was cool. definitely the long night of bullshit. Uh, specifically, when the team broke up again, uh, right after having gotten back together, um, and he's trying to not only save Valifar from oh. an obvious trap, uh, but he has Kemen, uh, his best friend's newly found reunited brother, like literally of not even hours, <laughs> and Cambiche, which is our adopted fucking uh, kid. <laughs> Both hanging out on a rooftop trying to figure out how to keep all three parties safe, but all three of them are in imminent danger, and that was probably very recently <laughs> the most traumatic event Rylet's been through. <laughs> yeah. And at the end, you were like carrying Valifar's body out of the place. <laughs> oh. And and this the thing that saved everything was like yeah. it was the lesser of however many evils we were dealing with because the sucky bitch uh, we call her a bitch because she's a bitch, so she's a sucky bitch. Yep, it's not um, because she's a lady, it's because she's a bitch. Uh, wait, hold she's on. not ladies? Anyway, yes. Yeah, sure. Irene does not call her a sucky bitch. Correct. We call her a sucky bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to speak for everybody here. <laughs> so, she did some shady shit way, way back, uh, and Ryland's held a mild grudge ever since. Valen's been always, like, instantly fucking fiery hate hatred right out the gates uh but she shows up and uh hastes him and being ryland uh so he has no choice really but to go along with what's going on here which in a sense he's not like horribly upset about because he he always likes trying to find the good people and, and figure things out and be like all right let's let's hear you out and the fact that Malin wasn't there to like <laughs> intervene was probably the only reason he like fully went through with it but yeah so he's trying to save his friend Valifar he's trying to keep his best friend's newly reunited less than an hour old brother from dying and our kid (laughs) Tabaxi from dying in this underground secret teleporting fucking demon fight ring whatever bullshit's going on and the succubus comes to save the day yep but in a very like (laughs) You should take my help, otherwise it'll be a problem. Because uh, her move when she arrived was to haste Ryland, which is very helpful in an escape. However, she kind of made it in a sense of like, if you don't want to talk to me, I will drop my haste and you will be stunned. And that is very counterproductive to escaping. So yeah, it was it wasn't exactly the the best of and cleanest of situations there. Uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it was it was harsh, but yeah. you made it. Yay. Yep. All after Yay. being down, like two times in the the battle on the rooftop yep. <laughs> with just the three of them. Yeah, there, there's so much. There's so much. <laughs> that night so, was so many layers. fucking intense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that rooftop, bat- rooftop battle is still, like, as a DM, one of my, like, favorite encounters. Yeah. Because, uh, like, everybody's turn was heavy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was almost always, like, I gotta pick up my, my friend's dead body and then I gotta attack this guy at the same time. Also, like, I gotta figure out, is that little girl here? Because we're looking for her, too. Also, we need his brother. Like, there was just so much shit going on. It was bonkers. Yeah. Uh, yep. So so when she saved the day, you owed her something, I suppose? Yeah, pretty much. Um, after she <laughs> helped him, 
she's been trying to like contact the group. She did initially with Irene. Uh, this is the sucky succubus, by the way. I almost said sucky bitch because of Landy. Um, the succubus <laughs> has been trying to um, contact the group. She tried before with Irene and that she charmed her and was like, hey, I want to talk to your guys. Uh, let's meet at this particular place. And then, you know, like, let's chat. But knowing that she's a demon and stuff, like she's clearly very cautious about the group because there's a cleric, there's like a wizard cleric and a paladin. So it's like, ah, it's not gonna work out very well. I'm just trying to cover my bases. But she also is very self-serving at the same time. So she tried that and it didn't really work out. They figured out that she was charmed real quick and then just fell in and was like, fuck this bitch. <laughs> um, but she laid low for a really long while and in finding this situation, again, being kind of like opportunist and self-serving, um, she realized that she could help in a way that's very like, now I get to like give demands at this point because I'm, I'm helping you. So I want help too. So yeah, she, she helped out Ryland uh, and kind of proposed an idea that would possibly help both sides. Uh, but it's very much a like in the future situation because they have a lot on their plate right now. But she got to speak with Ryland for a little bit. And uh, Ryland did, I think, I remember you pitched it to the group, but not like, we on Saturday, we will do this. It was a sort of, yeah. you know, she's she found this weird place and wants us to investigate it. Because the last time she went, she got attacked and she can't survive that kind of an assault. So maybe we can. <laughs> and she said she'd be there, maybe. I don't know. And everyone it's very like, much me like, if we could fit it in our busy schedule yeah. at some point, um, I, I really think we should probably do it. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Uh, that's the other thing is that I have to say I love so much, like, uh, across you guys as players. I love how often there's, like, one character who's like, this seems okay, it'll be fine. And then the others are like, no, what? <laughs> Why did you think that was acceptable? <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> like, Rylan talking to her was that. And then uh, Irene kind of receding and letting Kandara take over. Like, there's a very clear moment at the end of the last session where you watch everybody go, oh no. <laughs> but she's like, come down, take the wheel, I'm gonna hang out. <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, that was amazing. So, like, freaking uh, Vogli's misunderstanding, which is like, yeah, I know they wanted to go and send my mind. Not now, not today. We need a rest. That's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> That is very true. That's, that's one thing uh, I think that has been kind of working out for the difficult terrain team very recently. It seems like every fight you guys have kind of at least like known about recently, you guys have had the chance yeah. of like, we're going to rest, we're going to go do this thing. Because after that crazy night, it was like, let's let's just like relax for a moment and get our shit Lock the doors. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't let anybody in. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> they're outside, they're not real. <laughs> oh, uh, so that was awesome. Um, all right. Are there any other questions that you guys want to ask or, or elaborate on or nothing? Because uh, if, 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 we, if, if we're good, then uh, I think we'll go to our rapid fire question round. Uh, unless anybody wants anything else. Because uh, we're, we're closing in on our two hour mark here. So we're going to wrap up. Uh, so with that... Feel free to participate, chatters, uh, to, to just answer. I'm going to ask this or that. Um, don't take too long to think about it. That's why it's this. rapid fire. The idea is that. to or you can of, go with this. Yeah, exactly. Get in there, answer the question, and move on. Um, so, yeah. For example, I'll say, you know, left or right. You choose whatever the fuck it is. Four. So we're going to move through everybody as as I see on the um, the lore, the order on the uh, stream. I'm so good Rewind. at it. So I'll start, and then it goes to Flandy, and then it goes Damn to Vendus, and same. then to Maya, He's and same. then to Dubs. Uh, and I'll call out your name. And as I mentioned, chatters, feel free to uh, participate as well. Chatters. So for the first question, Warhammer or Mace? For me, I kind of, I don't know, I think I like the Mace. So <laughs> Flandy, Warhammer or Mace? Warhammer. <laughs> Nenners. For the Emperor! Yeah, fine. Yeah. Warhammer. Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm tempted to say Warhammer because bros, but Mace. <laughs> hey, all right, and Dubs. Warhammer. Warhammer. Yeah, I should have said that. All right. Uh, next one: Elf or Dwarf? Dwarf for me. Just race the same quest. <laughs> so races, no. Uh, Flandy. Dwarf. Oh, then there's. What kind? I know so many different <laughs> <lines>. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> so fair. <laughs> I really like wood elves. I really <laughs> don't like high elves, though. Yes. So it's like it's a weird combo there. I. Yep. Dwarves, the older I get, I used to think they were cool when they were, when I was young. I was like, I'm going fucking elves. Fucking elves. Oh, okay. elves. Maya. Dwarves. <laughs> uh, nah. I. I'm, I'm in the same book as Sinners, whereas in like. Oh my god. You guys are horrible. I, I, can't, I can't I can't mess with, but I'm also team with Elf. So <laughs> I, know, I hear you. Alright, so we'll say Elf for you. No, yeah. so, uh Elf. There you go. Alright, so for me, I choose dwarf because I do like both exactly the wood elf or whatever, but there isn't a single dwarf I dislike. There are plenty of elves that I dislike, and that's why that tips <laughs> me over to dwarf. So that's for oh. me. Uh, <laughs> I know the Jeopardy theme. <laughs> anyway, uh next one. Uh city or forest. 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 Yep. Then there's... City. Uh, uh, <laughs> forest, unless it's sci fi. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, dubs? Uh, city. Oh, okay. For no reason. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, I think I have something similar to this, but not quite. Uh, but support or DPS? Uh, oh. Support for me. Plenty? Support. Nenners? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do this to me, man. I like them both. Uh, I'll go DPS. Why not? Oh, okay. Maya? I do both every time. What you doing to be food? Right, come on. You gotta go quick. Come on, you got your support. Get out of here. <laughs> support. Right. Girl, you a glass can to get out of here. It said DPS, yeah. Bullshit. Not what do I do in the I'm supporting all the time. What did you say when you got the fucking familiar in Baldur's Gate? <laughs> That's different. <laughs> Long pause. That's different. Uh, dubs. Support or DPS? Uh, the, the board, the, the, the support. Support. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is not going to be a surprise for me. <laughs> uh, but support or DPS? Or after that is Asimar or Tiefling? Uh, tiefling all day, baby. I don't know enough about either. Yeah. You got to choose one. You know they're both descendants. One is a descendant of a uh, uh, celestial of some kind, and one has ties to demonic blood, fiendish blood, I should say. It should be it could be devil or demon. <laughs> tiefling. Hey, okay. Then there's. I'm yawning. Tiefling. <laughs> I'm yawning. He yells at me for yawning. <laughs> Maya. Uh, it's the same thing with the sub races on elves, but yeah, Asimai for me. Oh, cool. And dubs. Uh, tiefling. Team Tiefling in the house. Um, all right, we're back to weapons. Uh, let's see, I see. DPS feels better, I think. There isn't always a direct link between support action and numerical results. Yes. Very true. Listen, if you debuff hit points effectively, you are in support. You're support in a way. Yes, yeah. exactly. I agree. Oh, no. Yes, debuffs hit points <laughs> with amazing frequency. Exactly. No, I, I, I absolutely agree. <laughs> Coming from like a long time MMO healer, every time you have good DPS, you're like you're you're kind of supporting away. I don't have to use as many heals if you kill them real quick. <laughs> well, <then. laughs> uh, uh, anyway, moving on to the next one. Uh, back to weapons: spear or rapier? Spear for me, Flandy. Yeah, rapier's too like just eh, dent ding t almost. Uh, so spear. All right, that is <laughs> uh, spear. Maya. I like both, but spear. Oh, dubs. Uh, right really? We gotta get divorced. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, oh boy. Did no, you ever get divorced no. over a rapier? We gotta, we gotta go. I'm gonna take off your rapier. Go. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's mechanically bad. It is. I agree. I absolutely agree. I just don't like the form of like rapiers. Like that, that sort of like, yeah. That, like, I'm just <laughs> It's not for me. If you played Soul Calibur 2, even if you liked rapier before Raphael. Game, Raphael. you probably hate them. Correct. I hated them before Raphael in Soul Calibur, but he Oh, really, then you hate double hate now. I do, yeah. So he solidified it for me. That's what you make when you you know it's the most effective, simple weapon. It could be 
very basic where you're just poking, you can slash with it, you can huck it at a mofo who does not know what time it is. Like it's yeah. it's a great it's a great weapon. We can throw it. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Um moving on. <laughs> Try to end with six hundred exclamation marks. Okay. Um next one. <laughs> Chaotic or lawful? Uh, I think I have the feeling what everyone's going to answer, but I'm going to say chaotic for me. I don't even know why you're asking this question. For me. Right. Three, one, Definitely two, three, chaotic. chaotic. Lawful. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yep. That's, sorry, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, that's that's the wrong. <laughs> I'll just see myself. Oh no. <laughs> Right, exactly. Now we have two. Now you can hang out with Dubs. He's lawful as well. The rest of us are chaos. You can, <laughs> you can be chaotic and lawful. lawful. He's chaotic lawful. We never oh, know what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Lawful chaos. I mean, that's also known as neutral, but yeah, let's go with chaotic lawful. <laughs> 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 um, anyway, <laughs> uh, nobody's going to be surprised by my answer. Uh, horror or social intrigue? I will always choose horror because I love horror. Uh, but no. what, up to you. What do you mean by social intrigue? I mean, kind of like you're trying to infiltrate the the you know the the big CEOs building so you gotta like get in with the cool people and, and then kind of like work your way up the ladder and then possibly stealth your way in if you need to. Like, not. Like the theme of kind of. I, I feel like your explanation is biased, but I'm going to go horror. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. I don't know. Uh, if anyone could come up with a better uh, you know, example of social intrigue, please let me know. But it's Game horror. of Thrones is social intrigue. Yes, thank yeah. you. That's perfect. Thank yeah, you, def Nenners. Definitely horror. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, Nenners. Uh, I do like horror, but I think intrigue has more depth to it. So, I'm going to go with social yes. intrigue. I, I agree. Maya? I personally had many bad social intrigue experiences. So you know about some of them. <laughs> yes. So I would choose horror over social intrigue because I feel like social intrigue is actually scary. <laughs> <laughs> it can be. I, I agree. I think petty bitches are <laughs> way worse than the motherfucker who's just straightforward and wants to stab you. I, just, <laughs> I, agree. I agree. And uh, dubs. Uh, horror or social intrigue? It's social intrigue, but it's like I'm just tired. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. For me, I it depends on the social intrigue because, like, the Game of Thrones stuff is very, stuff I'm very not interested in at all, and that's why, like, everyone's like, "You love game needs like fantasy and stuff, don't you love Game of Thrones?" I'm like, that's not why I'm here. I'm here for the baddies, man. Give me some cool, weird things, shit, you know? Baddies. Like, that's, that's that's why I love horror so much because it's you know, like, there's uh. just kind of. I, don't know. I, I love it. Monsters. I love it when it's done right. Like lately, like the last few horror, like I can't watch horror movies anymore for the most They're part because it's yeah, yeah. so predictable. It's like, yeah. oh, let me guess. This thing's oh, I'm so scared. Oh my god, you Correct. got me. Yeah, <laughs> that I don't like. That I don't care for. But if it's like true horror, like you're like, holy fuck, what? Holy yeah. shit, what? Ah! <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And for, uh, also for me, I love uh, like psychological horror. So like the stuff where you're like, I can't trust my own mind because oh, she is happening. But for trauma. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So um, moving on to the next question, which by the way, I misspelled. So I'm going to say it the way I spelled it and hopefully you'll understand what I mean. Awesome. Uh, Fireboat or Eldridge Blast. <laughs> it was spelled Fireball, um, or other blast. I is think there a, is there a spell where I can shoot flaming ships at people? Because if there is, I'm taking it. That sounds is amazing. This like, is this like it's a Final Fantasy Tactics Ninja where you throw a boat that is on fire? It's like, <laughs> no, no, no. Find the Viking it's burial. Amazing. Brug gets it because it's it's his past ships. He just resummons them as they're flaming. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if that was autocorrect or fat fingers because I don't know the, the A and the L are on opposite sides of the keyboard, so I don't know how I fucked that up. Um, no, this is great. This is the best spell I've ever heard of. Fireboat or Elder. I'm team Fireboat all day. Yeah, if I had a choice, I think I would Fireboat. I thought it was Texas. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm I would, typing this shit out. I would definitely Fireboat. Okay, Dennis, would you Fireboat or Elder's Blast? <laughs> 
fireboat, hundred uh, percent. <laughs> assuming I'm not shooting like flaming Viking ships of people, uh, I would I would choose uh, Eldritch Blast. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Legitimate yeah. size. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's between firebolt, <laughs> definitely Eldritch Blast. But yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> See, if you had told regular ship. ass firebolt, I would have chosen Eldritch Blast. But I'm sorry, but you can't just give us firebolt. Uh... Fireboat, correct. <laughs> I I love the idea of someone just constantly chucking fire, but just the, the bonuses you can get from the elders blast and like you know all your invocations, it's like you can't you can't not, man. You're like you can't yeah. uh, so, what is it? Fire uh, the the Agonizing. fiendish sorcerer can get cause you get like uh you yeah. get close, you get like but the flames of flag. Flala Flegmagol. Flegathon Flegalos? I don't yeah, know. Flegalos, yeah, Flegalos, <laughs> yeah. Um, We're really, really bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, you can get some really good... And plus, if you're a sorcerer, it's like, okay, now I can twin, I can haste, I can do all this, like... And I hasten to uh, quicken and do, like, all this cool meta magic stuff on top of that. And you can make the argument, you can do the same thing with Eldritch Blast if you split, but yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Actually, I don't even think... Did I get to you, uh, Firebolt? Firebolt. Okay, Firebolt. Firebolt, Firebolt. Yes, baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, all right, and uh, we're on our last two rapid fire questions. So, barbarian or rogue? Unsurprisingly, barbarian for foos. Barbarian, yep, Nenners. rogue. Let's go, Ooh. Maya. Rockway, okay, dope. Rockway, barbarian. <laughs> barbarian. All right, so we have three for barb, two for uh, rogues. Uh, Rouge, I mean, the hard man. way that building a warlock uh, that is not Hexblade is not a great frontliner. <laughs> 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 I do my best with it. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, there's not oh, a lot no. of. I have a Hexblade and she does some crazy shit. That's what he's saying. Like, is not that's a Hexblade. not a Hexblade. Yeah. <laughs> that That's actually kind of oh. rolling right now. Like, he oh, is, okay. he's not a Hexblade warlock, but uh, none of this is. Gracious in his home brewing, and, and uh, he has a plethora of skills. Oh, they yeah. are very, they're not DPS at all, but they're very situational yes. <laughs> uh, to include giant centipedes. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but like sometimes it's paralyzing because it's like, shit, can I use this? Is this going to be useful? Oh, fuck. Will this even do anything to the, I don't think this is going to do. Fuck it. Elder Blast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Oh my God. I love it. Um, uh, all right. Last question. Um, radiant or necrotic? Uh, I'm, you know me, I'm a terrible person. I like necrotic. <laughs> Plan to your own. Oh, it's just so vile. Like, it just, is. Have you ever seen like legitimate in-person necrotic wounds? Uh, that are just like fucking. I've had them. They uh, suck. They yeah, no. Them. Radiant. Don't, don't think about it. Replace radiant. Games. Don't do it yet. Radiant. Radiant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ne uh, Necro all day. Hey, Maya. <laughs> Forget who's team I'm on. Radiant. Nope. Yep. Radiant. And Radiant. All right. So. I'm going to set somebody on fire and blind them, Ben. Hey, Nether. What do you guys do? Yes. Good question. Are we the bad guys? <laughs> yes. Uh, I think so. You, you two are both the primary candidates of the Darkest Campaign. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> there's only two stable ones running. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, so yeah. It, I, it's I, so I, bad you tried to pull darkness into the light campaign. <laughs> I don't me? know what you're talking about. I didn't, Nenis. Nenis did. Nenis I knows what he did. Listen, I played ball. Everything was totally good with me. I, I was ball. a very happy character. <laughs> Everything was fine. He's the one who tried to bring in Vecna to humble one. <laughs> I, I stopped myself in my right. defense. No, okay. but like, see, like, the thought didn't cross my mind because I already knew it was wrong. You went through and actually talked to the DM about it. <laughs> it was almost a reality before you finally hit the brakes. What's that uh, part of the next quote? Uh, is it better to be naturally good or overcome your inner evil through great <laughs> efforts? <laughs> Everybody, real quick, just vote like it's for me real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, radiant is the best gradient. <laughs> I love you, girl. You're amazing. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> well, here, let me let me put it this way. If you wanted to kill somebody you really hated, would you use radiant or would you necro? This is this is what I'm asking for the bad guys now. It's like that this is Right? If you really wait, wanted on. this motherfucker to suffer, what would you Wait, do? wait. 
I'm going to play my villain card here. It depends on their worst nightmares. So if they're like some faithful, like, you know, super like lawful goody good person, if you could present as an angel and flay them <laughs> so they die confused. But it's not like flaying, it's more like like burning goldiness. Like it's not like radiant <laughs> goldiness. If you were doing slashing damage, I'd give you the flay. But you know, you're what if you like, you know, attack them with like a I don't know, emblazoned golden sword, and they're like, wait, what's happening? That's I don't still know. slashing, like right. like raw radiant damage. I imagine it's just like burning but happy, right? Like it's, it's a not fucking laser, laser. It's a laser. <laughs> it's a fucking laser now. Laser is fucking cool. Remember that history video? The sun is a deadly laser. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna kill people with deadly lasers. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's <I> tied. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I love you guys. Get that guy out of here. So dark. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I believe that's the end of my rapid fire questions, and we've run through a few here. So, I believe this is where we're going to start ramping up. Um, so, I believe this week is a regular week for us, and we can be back on Friday and on Saturday, barring no emergencies. Um, uh, I won't be here on Saturday. Okay, well, kidding. I might not be here on Saturday. I'm, I'm flying on Saturday. If I can be set up Saturday afternoon, night, I will be. All right, Just lay okay. in your backyard. I'm not flying. I'm being oh, flying. Okay. Oh, oh, all right. How did that land in your backyard? I think it was really dumb the way we were like, oh, as in, oh, I understand now that you can't land in your backyard. What the hell? <laughs> 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 You're not the pilot. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll be back Friday, and who the fuck knows about Saturday. So uh, we'll, we'll let you know as soon as we can. And uh, I'm, like, I'm like, that's it. So thank you for joining us on our cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our second episode of Cheese. So thank you for being here. And uh, we'll talk to you later on Friday. So bye. Good night. <laughs>